Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to start without a recap because <laughs> we have a new player and we're going to introduce that new player without a recap of what the group has done in the past, even if he knows what that is. And we'll allow that kind of recap maybe to play out later. So, Agamar, you ready? Yes. You're in the Earth Towers of Black Leech Rift. It's a marshland of sinkholes and snake nests and clouds of biters. It smells of decaying matter, and each footstep stirs up this miasma of odors that kind of force you to close your mouth so you don't taste them and try not to swallow. You see mounds or knobs that rise out of this kind of murkiness where there's drifting uh, fog and mist, and those mounds are what's left over of the earth towers of the Black Leech Rift. The towers themselves are from ancient Simbar, and they never rose into the, the sky. They always dove deep into Davakar itself, into the very roots of Davakar, and the very tops of them, essentially the top of the tower was the only things that stuck up above. And barbarians would kind of know the lore and history of those, regardless of what clan they're from that the Malgamar River was made to flood the area and swallow those that had lived there in old Simbar uh, by magic and need and desire and greed. And Agamar is in this place. He finds it that sometimes the land is solid and sometimes he sink, sneaks up to his... Uh, ankles and sometimes he's up in his waist and Agamar is hunting something what is he hunting is he hunting a beast is he hunting men is he hunting an abomination what brought him to the earth towers so Agamar is uh, he heard rumors of some Templars and some black cloaks okay so they are just rumors. And so did he come on his own or was he sent by his chief, Leonid of the Yadesi, or perhaps a witch from Zubla, the Blue Grove, or Tadakes, the Endless Lakes that is in Yadessa land? Or is it personal? Uh, uh, this is more of a personal quest. Okay. Personal quest. It's downtime for him. Okay. So you're following this track of men. Uh, Ambrians move through the forest unlike barbarians, even black cloaks and especially Templars. They move with abandon, especially if they haven't learned the danger of quiet walking and trying to be unseen so that Davakar doesn't notice their presence. And you're following this track of these men. It kind of comes up onto a square dais of the top of what was once a tower of the Black Leech Rift. You know, you come up on this stable ground that's elevated above the marshland itself, and their track leads across this tower, past the threshold or the stairs of the tower, and kind of obliquely, like across one edge, and you notice other footsteps, oddly, that seem to be barefooted human that kind of circle the tower and then go off in another direction. Uh, what I'd like you to do is to make a vigilant roll. Okay. <laughs> you are there, Agamar, maybe <sighs> trying to sort out these two tracks. You know, you're following Templars and Black Cloaks, and perhaps there's somewhere between five and ten of them, the trail you picked up through the marsh. You don't have an idea of where they're going, whether they're transiting the marsh or whether they're going to somewhere specific in the marsh. And these barefooted tracks kind of catch your attention because you can see the toes, you know, five toes of a human barbarian or elf or 
you know, it doesn't look like they're goblin and it doesn't look like they're troll or ogre. They're just not big enough. Kind of circle the opening of this tower. And then from the tower itself, you see the light of fire. It starts to bounce off the walls and out of that gloom comes this beast human form of fire and ash and smoke holding a fiery sword that just rises out of the gloom right in front of you. You're probably 10 feet uh, well within distance of it as this demon or whatever you would call it in Barbarian rises out of the depths of the tower itself. What does Agamar do? He is uh, 10 feet away. Roughly. The, the creatures. Yeah, 10 feet, 3 meters. Within movement and distance. The creature is, does it look like it's attacking or fleeing? Or, it, or it just surprised? is walking up out of the Walking up out of the tower itself, it doesn't seem to have, you know, it looks at you and it brandishes its sword, but then only takes maybe one or two steps past the tower entrance and kind of prepares itself as you catch it off guard. It, um, I'll show you what it kind of looks like here in a second. Uh, it doesn't, you know, attack you directly. It stops, sees you, takes a defensive positioning, and that's where you catch it there. And this is what it looks like as it rises up out of the Tower of Agamar. Okay. So Agamar is on defense. Or uh, my, tower, my fault, Tower of Black Leech Rift, I said. Agamemnon draws his axe. Okay. And box at the creature. He does friend or foe, friend or foe. Okay. Um. Kai, what happens? What does, what does Ignatius do as he rises up and finds this barbarian and his axe? And you're muted. Ignatius would turn back, well, not, not like leaving uh, it, this uh, strange barbarian, out of its eye line. Uh, sort of lean back in even more of a defensive stance. And uh, if Agamar recognizes any elvish wording, uh, he'll hear a voice of crackling fire calling back down into the depths of the uh, tower that there is a barbarian outside. Okay. Agamar, do you speak Elvish? No, he barely <laughs> speaks common. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you see this fiery being you know, like turn to you and kind of look over its shoulder and speak down into the hole of the tower to something else behind it. Um, doesn't really answer you directly. Uh, you would probably recognize the elvish tongue. You just don't know what they say. You just don't, you don't hear it, but you would probably understand the inflection, the pace of it, the fluidity of it, the sounds of Elvish, you just don't know what, it, what it's saying. You probably recognize its Elvish language, but you, you don't know what the fiery being says. Uh, what does Agamar do? Okay. Agamar holds his ground. Okay. He thinks they are not Ambrians, so that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I won't have to kill him right away. <laughs> All right. So who is coming up after it? Ignatius of the company? Who is first out of the depths of the tower? It'd probably be either me or Bo. You mean Hagen? Oh, I, I do believe Hagen, Hagen was uh, last. Okay. Mr. 
I, I, I want to oh, sting that's right. and fight everything. Right, I right. Want, uh, probably, uh, actually, first coming out is Kai. Uh, so, uh, Agamar will see a uh, tall, sickly looking uh, edgelord of an elf. Uh, an elf? Emerging from the uh, uh, gateway Kyle next. Uh, yeah, that picture is like school photo day. I've been uh, preparing <laughs> for this. Uh, Kai Anu does not look like that on a good day. <laughs> Kai Anu uh, looks like he hasn't eaten for a week and has forgotten to shower for the past two days. Uh, he is also carrying like a three foot lot, uh, wide spider alright Ignatius is, you're carrying it up this kind of broken spider with its legs underneath it um, hauling, it out alive. Of the, hauling it out of the rift <laughs> out of yep. the tower so Kai Anu is the elf uh -huh. yes and there's Hagen um, who's next? Uh, Gutorm, Adela. I, probably you all come up in, in a gaggle, really. So, um, as you all come up, Adela comes up, Gutorm the goblin comes up, Hagen the Ambrian comes up. Uh, what does Agamar look like to them as the company sees him for the first time? So, as the group emerges from the hall, they are kind of they're astonished to see this beast of a barbarian. He uh, looks wild and feral and brutal. He is well over six feet tall, close to six and a half. That's about two meters for you non-Americans. <laughs> and about maybe a hundred kilograms in, in mostly bustle. He's... Uh, he has a brutish look. Uh, he looks like he has seen a lot of combat. Uh, he has wild black hair and uh, untamed black beard streaked with gray. But most noticeable is his eye patch. He is missing a right eye and he wears an eye patch. And also he is brandishing an enormous double up. Okay. Adela and Gutorm and Hagen, you come out of the hole with Kai and Ignatius is there and you see this kind of brutish barbarian. How about each of you kind of describe your characters for uh, Agamar? Uh, Adela, Agamar would recognize that you're a fellow barbarian. Uh, what does Adela look like as she rises up out of the tower? Right. So Adela probably is the most uh, sophisticated of the group, <laughs> uh, given her background. Uh, typical uh, barbarian Godinja, you know, raised. And since uh, Yodessa is a, a neighboring clan, I'm pretty sure we could recognize each other's markings and, and mannerisms pretty quickly. Where's Adela from? Oh, Godinja. Okay. Yeah, your clan is south of ours. Of yes. Mine. So I, as a neighboring clan, I'm pretty sure we would recognize that. Uh, but she carries a staff. Uh, it's a, you know, a simple wooden staff, but uh, ruins carved across it uh, in a, a gym socketed towards the top uh, she has a very you know regal yet uh, not quite nobility stance to her mm -hmm. and I think that's about it Gutorm kind of comes up you know near last but Hagen has obviously bring it up the rear uh, Gutorm you come out of the Black Leech Rift Tower how about describing what Gutorm the Goblin looks like to Agamar as you kind of 
maybe tuck in behind Ignatius or Adela? I think I think he smells the salted fish before he <laughs> sees me. Uh, my bag is starting to get empty, sadly, but uh, you know, Gutom is a, is a goblin. Uh, the ears are pointing a little bit downward, long, long nose. He He's not very tall. Uh, and uh, yeah, he usually he tries not to be seen that, that much, but uh, recent events have, have uh, brought him a little bit more into the spotlight. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah. Gutorm had some pretty impressive arrow shots while they were down in the depths fighting the ancient spider broodmother's younglings who she was testing from up above Hagen. Hagen. Yeah, you do see him clinging to a bow that's probably taller than him. <laughs> if he puts it in the ground, you know, and yeah. grounds it. Um, now, Agamars are standing there and the bar elf comes up and the barbarian and the goblin all, all seems within reason. But last out of the hole is an Ambrian. Hagen comes up last. Uh, he's a little bit damaged as some of the others may be. Uh, what does Hagen look like? How does he as he comes up out of the hole last having, you know, fought the spiders below. Yeah. Uh, I think he would present himself as a typical Ambrian, maybe scout or treasure hunter, um, lightly armored, uh, with a fencing sword and a shield. Yeah. And is he carrying his, He has other he things have, that other well, things that would have his, Yeah, he would have his cartography stuff, but he wouldn't have it out now. Right. Obviously coming from from the depths of, <laughs> of the tower. Um that's I mean that's So Agamar, you see this Ambrian come up last. You know, all seems fine and good. You know, elves, you understand Adela is you can tell her clan because every clan dresses a little bit different, has a little bit of different subtleties to how they wear their clothes or belts or leather work, what they put in their hair, you know, those kind of markings. Goblins are goblins, which you may not or may have seen many times in the Odessa. And then an Ambrian exits the tower. Uh, what does Agamar do? Agama growls at the Ambrian. <laughs> but then he thinks. Maybe maybe he's maybe he's a traitor. He could be he could be one of the good ones. And he just, just keeps quiet. But he's most concerned about the man on fire, the fire creature. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like <laughs> regardless, this being a fire, just the way Ignatius looks. Um, I'm not certain Agamar would really know magic of that nature. Uh, it's possible, though, maybe, but maybe not. Um, and so the company meets Agamar. Uh, Agamar, do you... I mean, how does that go? Does Agamar and the company share details? Agamar is tracking Templars and Black Cloaks through the through the Black Leech Rift that lead off in a different direction. Uh, how does that, how does that interaction occur? Or what happens as you meet each other at the top of the Black, uh, top of the tower? Well, Agamon, when he sees the Barbarian, is uh, a little bit less hostile. And he asks the group, what are you doing here? Bigger question is: Is what brings you so far from the Odessa lands? 
I'm How hunting, old are you, by the I'm way? hunting a group of Templars and Black Cloaks. They need to be killed. I, I agree with that. It seems you can't throw a stone around these uh, these woods without hitting one of those. The humans do have a habit of investing everywhere. We uh, unfortunately ran across a few just a little while ago. But we are now here at this tower. Like completely right. normal routes. Yeah, well, I'm just wondering, did you come across some black cloaks? No, here? no, I'm tracking them through the woods. I just heard rumors. I haven't seen them yet. Then I found you people. Did you see any Templars and Black Cloaks? Well, there's none down there. Lots of spiders. <laughs> well, no. Yes. Probably still a lot, lot of spiders. But the Agamar than... is gruff, and he just still uh, repeats, wants to know why why the group is there. YouTube just reaches uh, some salted fish to him and, and offers him some, some fish. <laughs> Agamar snarls <laughs> and just kind of waves his hand away. <laughs> well, or for me. That's a lucky man. Is... Hey, c can you guys do me a, a small favor and put your uh, name yeah, in the brackets? Yeah, we did see who's who. I did see the message. Yeah, and just in Discord, please. Yeah, let's take a little bit, a couple of minutes to do that. And then we will see if Adela or one of the others, uh, Kai, talks about the mission they're on from Tia, Tierra, Tiana, and the elves regarding the forest spirit Eox. Uh, I would not say it's a mission, mm -hmm. uh, though he would tell Agamar that they're traveling uh, south through the forest. Uh, some, as ever, the people from outside the forest uh, keep taking things, and uh, we need to get one of them back. It's Kind of important, time sensitive. Yeah, oh. Agamar looks a little confused. He says, "Stop using big words. What <laughs> are what? What do you need to kill?" Preferably humans. Uh, in this case, uh, what's what's the name for the humans that live outside Davica? Ambrians. In character question. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think you uh, would know that. I I might, but humans are humans. But the barbarians at least live within uh Davakar, but there's so many tribes that you... <laughs> Right. Keeping track of them all is something of a faff, and let alone these invaders. I now, now, Kai. Not all humans are bad, as somewhat given an example towards Hagen and Bo before him, and that one big creature. <laughs> so, he looks at, Agamar looks at the group and asks, is there any money in this? Is there any gold in this? I'm sorry, Thalers. No, we are doing this simply for the, the joys of helping Devakar. Why is it helping that? 
Agmar snarls. Is Talor that Ambrian currency? Talor is an Ambrian currency. Yeah, I, I think that's that's everyone uses that, right? Pretty much the barbarians, I, I ple believe, were more of a trade and barter society before Ambrians. They don't have coinage that's ever been discussed before, although Thaler has become more, especially in Odavia land and, and perhaps not for Karahar. Yadessa maybe, but um, barbarians themselves didn't really deal in coinage. They dealt more of a barter society. There's no coinage mentioned. Thaler is the only coinage. And uh, certain clans like Odavia and uh, Vavo to the east have made rich takings on Ambrian Thaler. So it's probably fairly ubiquitous and becoming soup. You know, maybe barbarians between themselves may still barter, but it's becoming more and more the way and reason to exchange goods. Again, I'm not very good at presenting questions in character. <laughs> uh, as an elf, assume that a lot of the questions Kai just asks offhand about human society that he has <laughs> never been in before. <laughs> <laughs> He's sequestered in the Hall of Thousand Tears. Yep. Adela, do you talk, or does any of the characters talk about the far spirit Eox as a reason for going to Thistlehold and their ultimate destination? I am not sure a wayward barbarian, even if he is from uh, Yadessa, would be something I'd partake of that information with just you're on a at mission. least not yeah we're we're on a mission uh you know it's kind of important you know fate of the world kind of thing preventing davakar from sinking into corruption idea we what uh tribesman if you can show us the road to umbria uh <laughs> particularly this town called Thistleholt. Uh, you can have the Thala from every Ambrian that we kill along the way. Okay. Agamar, yeah. Agamar, suddenly, uh, Agamar's disposition improves markedly <laughs> at the word of <laughs> killing Ambrians and Thalers. He says, okay, I will no. join you. Are you a tracker? No. He shows Guide. up, he brandishes his big, big, big axe. I just kill things. Okay. I... You find him and I'll kill him. I am not very good at this trading deal, am I? I didn't even buy us a good guide. <laughs> Sorry, right. we'll work on it in the next couple of leagues. So as you're standing there, the Black Leech Rift, Agamar and the company, as Agamar feels like he would join them, do you decide to leave tracking the Black Cloaks and the Templars and leave that be... Agamar, or try to convince them to finish that seeking first, or do you... Well, does Agamar have any clues as to where they are? Yeah, I think you would. You're on the map right here, right where the, um, the company icon is. And mm -hmm. he's probably traveled up the Malgamar, which he should be fairly knowledgeable of traveling along the edge of the Malgamar is quite a bit safer than traveling even through the lightest part of Davakar directly. Even if he came from Yadessa, he may have gone to Carvosti because the chief, the high chief is Yadessan. And 
maybe he's so horned there for whatever reason. Maybe he was along the banks of the Volgoma, and he traveled up following this trail somehow along the Malgamar. He would know that the Malgamar going southwest, you know, there is a bridge camp between Carvosti and Thistlehold, which is fairly common knowledge. There's a road that goes from Thistlehold kind of around the outskirts of Jakar past Ianor, the river, and then dives south toward Thistlehold, which is in the in the edge of the forest. Uh, it would be common knowledge to any barbarian and Agrimar that out of Thistlehold range treasure hunters and the Ambrian nation, uh, Black Cloaks, Church of Prios, he probably knows all those kind of individuals. He would know that the, the way to Ma- along the banks of the Malgamar to the, to the bridge camp, which is slightly south of this of Carvosti, and he would know the road between Carvosti around Jakar and past the Ianor to Thistlehold. Most barbarians would. Hagen would obviously know that whole road also because he's probably traveled that road. Um, Kai would probably have no idea whatsoever. He would know the Malgamar and Carvosti, but not necessarily the way. So I think Agamar would have that general knowledge uh, and that he probably tracked the Templars and the Black Cloaks up along the the, the Malgamar River towards the Earth Towers of the Black Leech Rift because that's one of the safer ways to travel in some degree. Mm-hmm. So Agamar makes a proposition. So I'll tell you what. I'll join you on your quest if you help me find these Templars and kill them. They also they're probably carrying stuff, valuable things. Yeah. How hard could that be? Kai the Elf agrees immediately. Uh what about Adela? Do you take a moment to figure out what these black cloaks and templars may be doing in the black leech rift? Or do you that's are... exactly what I'm concerned about. Uh, so I, I know you were telling him, but were they coming or were they going in the direction of Kavosi or no. in the up direction? They were going more kind of northwest, northeast through the Black Leech Rift, not necessarily completely 180 degrees or the opposite direction, but they're obviously traveling through the Black Leech Rift in the in a direction that's not towards where you were going to go. Okay. Companions, well, you know, I suffer no black cloak that would uh, take us out of our destination uh, quite a bit. Seems to be in the opposite direction, according to uh, our young barbarian friend here. Oh, in which case, no, because... There is a slight time limit to our trip to Thistlehold. Now, Agamar probably would show you the tracks. They're not old. Uh, and I'm just providing that information for you, for you to know. He's tracked them probably for a while. And the tracks that obliquely covered the... Obliquely go over the kind of dais of the top of the tower are obvious. Gutro, what do you make of these tracks here? What, what say you what do like? I make of these tracks? Is there any way I can see how fresh they are? Yeah, I think with your survival instinct, um, Gutorm, this isn't a very difficult thing for you. You uh, are not necessarily skittish, but you, you know, have a sixth sense and you have survival instinct and you've lived in Carvosi for a while. They're fairly fresh. Um, you can almost see as they step down back into the marsh that the footprints haven't filled back in with water at cer- until they get, you know, into the marshland themselves. 
the the weeds of the marsh are freshly bent. Um, they're yeah, not. I, they're not old. Yeah, I, I bend down to to the footprint. I look at it. I sniff at it. I take a handful and I taste it. Uh, just to look like I know what I'm doing. And uh, these tracks are not old. Uh, if if we keep pace, it would take long, I think, to 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 do this on the side. Mm. Okay, Gudrun. Can you tell how many? I look around and how many tracks do I see? <laughs> uh, roll me a cunning roll with minus three. Oh damn! <laughs> Just because you're in the marsh, <laughs> like you're in marsh, <laughs> you're in marshlands. Like they are fresher, but you are in marshland. And... Yeah. No, just barely. Good term. No. You good term. You think there's maybe twelve? It's hard to tell that the marshes pretty you know they've trampled through the area and flattened a big kind of path that fills in with mud and stuff and um you probably guess between 10 and 15 as best as you can say yeah i i i really i just uh, i'm giving this information uh, 10 maybe more hmm not too much of a trouble. <laughs> what do you think, Hagen? Oh, we're fine. <laughs> Hagen. Remember, I, I, I wasn't the one to run away from the spider. <laughs> yes, of course. I should have known your answer without asking. <laughs> Hagen, when when Hagamar like wants to track down these black cloaks and Templars, and you know, obviously he has murderous intent. It, it's perfectly clear this huge barbarian uh rough eye patch giant axe like like it's obvious Hagen the Ambrian you go all in what, what does that you know no what does how does he react like they're gonna track down these Ambrians with the intent to you know commit violence yeah. right well he typically doesn't shy away from violence um, I don't think he has any allegiance to to black cloaks or to Templars or any of those. Okay. Agamar, you, the group decides that, yeah, we're going to track down these black cloaks and Templars. And the Ambrian Hagen, you know, is all in. Like, he probably is in almost as much all in as you are. Uh, maybe not so vociferous about it and so eager to you know deal blood but obviously it's no no big deal to him to track down and a fellow ambrian to follow agamar the barbarians wish to do this in the black leech rift uh what does agamar think about that when he sees that in an ambrian especially given his present uh, thoughts about Ambrians in general. Agama holds his thoughts to himself, but he still remains very he still remains suspicious of the group and particularly of the Ambrian. Okay, but he holds his thoughts. At least they're uh, at least they're willing to. To him, he thinks they're they're okay. At least they're willing to. Uh, help him find this group of Templars and Black Cooks. Okay. Um, He's at, he thinks they're, this group is either with them or against them. He'll find out soon enough. <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't make him fear at all to be outnumbered to this extent with a flaming being. Ag Agamar reasons that with this group of, uh, with this Group composition is very, it's rather pretty unlikely. Oh, okay. Uh, Templars. So you're going to head uh, slightly northeast through following this trail. Who's 
leading, you're going to somewhat go in a single file. Um, it is marshland. You will walk through the kind of fetid marshland periodically on solid ground, periodically sinking up to your ankles or waist and coming back up and out. Sometimes you hit a sinkhole, but who's in front? I mean, uh, Gutom, he, he uh, looked at the print, footprint, so I feel like it's uh, natural that he's in front at okay. this one. And I won't be far behind. I won't be far behind. Agamar won't be far behind. Mm -hmm. I'm out with my cartography stuff. You're kind of in the middle, in the middle of the pack, probably. You're um, making a map, or at least drawing crude drawings of the yeah the marshlands. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. reasonable. You're picking out, you know, you're probably placing different towers of the Black Leech Rift, you know, in orientation, looking left and right as you're doing that through the through the uh, through the walk, maybe looking up at the sky when you can see the sky and trying to get a sense of east, west, you know, north, south, while Gutorm leads and the giant Agamar is close behind. Uh, Gutorm, make me a vigilant roll. Just flat out. You're following this track, Gutorm, and you kind of get to this ridge of solid land that dips away a little bit and just off to the right, you see like a stone pillar with what looks like a stone tablet that's been carved into it and a boot floating at its base. A what? A boot. A boot floating at its base. It's like in a little bit of marshy water. The, the kind of stone pillar rises up um, maybe one meter, three feet yeah. above, you know, the ground itself, the marshy ground. It's kind of a stone square pillar, and then part of the top looks like it's got like a tablet or a plaque that's part of the stone with some sort of writing on it, and then at the base of the pillar is a boot. Okay. And it's probably at, you know, you saw it a fair distance, so you probably slow up. It's maybe 25 yards, 20 meters. I'm gonna, uh, walk up to the pillar and I'm gonna try on the boot. Okay. <laughs> um, Gutomi, you're in front Maybe and that? you step off <laughs> and you, you know, you go down to like ankle deep water and then you're kind of in knee deep water and then it maybe comes up to your, just below your waist a little bit and you're going to have to kind of wade out a little bit to that. You know, the ground underneath you is soft, but firm, you know, kind of squishy, but firm um, enough for your footing. Um, but you are going to kind of wade out the last 10 yards, 10 meters you know, eight meters uh, to get, you realize the boot is just kind of floating there or, you know, against the side of the pillar itself. Yeah. So, yeah, I pick up the boot. Okay. Um, and I, I, I smell it. <laughs> Kutrum, what are you doing with the boot? And uh, once I hear that, I, I put the boot, they had my hand in the air with the boot. I found a boot. So, Gutrum the Goblin, like, wades out into this, you know, pillar of stone with this plaque above his head. You know, he's waist deep in water. He picks up the boot, which is obviously much larger than he would wear, and, you know, sticks his hand and smells it. He, it feels warm gutorm but it's you know partially filled with water but you know you put your hand in it and you realize you know it's it feels warm and sticky um agamar as the goblin walks out towards the this pillar what does agamar do 
Agamar is uh, just vigilant and just uh, tries to see. Okay. Uh, tries to see if there's anybody around. Okay, I would have you roll vigilant for the group. Agamar is second, and and the rest of the group is arrayed behind him as Gutorm the Goblin rolls out into the swamp to this tower. Um, does anyone do anything specific aside uh, from look at Gutorm? I, I would stop doing my cartography and change to my weapons and then take a few strides back where we came just to make sure nobody is behind us. Okay. Um, are these pillars reminding Kai of anything that he's read about or anything like that? Um, concerning yeah. like lore of the forest and things. Yeah, Kai, as you look out and you see the goblin like raise his hand with the boot, um, you see the plaque over him. That's moldy you know got kind of surface mold or surface patina you know or dirt or that sort of thing and there's obviously elven script that has been chiseled into the plaque itself you can't read it from here um but you know that whatever that tower is in the plaque has been played you know there it's all one piece of stone that whatever is written on the plaque you can tell just from the way that the plaque, the letters move, that it's Elvin. Now you're too far away, obviously, where you're standing to get a sense of what it says. But um, Kai would know that. He would know that, the, aside from what Agam Agamar and the barbarians would know, is he would know that, yes, the Malgamar was made to flood this area through magic and violence and to swallow the Simbar people who were the progenitors of the Black Leech Rift and the towers um, in ancient days, but that's probably as far as he would know. Kudrum, did you not learn from our last experiences with pillars and tablets? What tablet? Different party. Right. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So confused. Okay. Tablet? My bad. Um, Gutorm has his boot in the air. Uh, Agamar and Hagen are looking at, about. Agamar is probably looking a little bit northeast. Hagen is looking a little bit you know, Southwest, you know, everyone's kind of on guard. Hagen and Agamar, you slap at your neck and face as these kind of biting insects, maybe half the length of your finger, you know, you see one or two or three or four, and it kind of takes you a bit because you're looking about and then you get, ah, that hurt. And, oh the hell is that and you know you're you're looking around and that more of them are hitting you and you look up and both of you see this kind of cloud of small things low to the ground maybe 10 yards 10 meters across come across the marshlands towards you uh what does hagen do as he slaps at his neck and comes back with a little bit of blood. Yeah, I'm going to quickly point them out. Okay. And it's not something we're really familiar with, right? I would I would think Hagen would have no idea. Um, okay. okay. He, uh, I would not expect. Uh, what does Agamar do when he has these kind of thumb-sized bugs, you know, the the forward scouts of this kind of mass cloud that's coming towards him, uh, what would Agamar do? Agamar uh, tries to uh, warn the group to fall back, waves using his hand, and he kind of inches back as well. Uh... 
Okay, so tr to try to move in some opposite direction from this cloud. Um, oh, and he draws his axe. He draws his axe. <laughs> draws his axe, yeah. We let you do that automatically. I think anyone going through the marshes of Blackly Drift wouldn't be walking around with their hands in their pocket. Or, you know, unattended. Nope. No. Uh, Gutorm, you got your hand in this boot, and it kind of feels sticky inside and warm, and you feel something wrap up along your leg and then tuck into the top of your belt and you everyone is looking out their their attention is taken away from you you're by yourself their backs are towards you as they turn to look at this cloud that you may not be able to see because you're sunk down into this water up to your waist and you're tugged down your knees are bent a little bit as something like forcibly tugs you down there's a little bit of a circle of wave of water as you're tugged down probably close to mid chest level just underneath your rib cage not quite your armpits but forcibly tugged down you feel this large kind of thing wrapped up one of your legs you know in a spiral fashion and then tucked into your tucked into your belt line really uh, which is now below the water you can't see you got your hand in this boot everyone's back towards you um what do you do somebody found a new friend <laughs> well thing Gutom uh, is thinking is he, he looks at the boots and once he feel feels this thing dragging him down uh uh a brilliant thought comes to his head maybe this is why this boot was here alone <laughs> yeah, you maybe you take the boot off. <laughs> Goo torment you <laughs> you look at your hand because it was all kind of sticky and it's just red, you know, clotted blood, you know, is down his hand uh as he takes off the boot of his hand because he has it up and he feels this other tug <laughs> and he goes down maybe to the armpits before he struggles up to a stand. Um and uh yeah, so uh, I throw the boot away, I take a hand on my dagger if I can, and I scream out, like, uh, some help here, please. All right, so we will go to initiative. How's that? That's probably the easiest way. Uh, <laughs> um, let me pull up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put us on a map in just a second. Uh, by the way, that Elven dagger I got last time, uh -huh. is that something special with that? I the, asked about that last time, or is it just a normal dagger? Uh, you, right. Um, I think Gutorm would know that it, when he was given that dagger, that it's, you know, bright. It has a bright blade and a copper hilt, and that it's for the darkness. For when Davikar rises up against you, Gutorm, Goblin, yeah. strong of heart, who helped Eriloss cast a sigil, a piece above Carvosti, that when the darkness is upon you and you have need of it, uh, it can be used to defend you. Um, let me pull the... I'm just getting the map settled before I...
Oh, I gotta bring Gutorm out here in the middle of the water. Are we allowed to see? Uh, it's, you can't see it? No. Uh, let me put the li configure to light. I probably just forgot to figure. You should be able to see it. Yeah, I see. I can see it. There is global illumination. You don't see it? No, I don't. Um, Agamar, do you see the map? Yes, I see the map. Uh, maybe you refresh. We'll see if it fixes it for some reason. No, I do. Now do you see it? Yep. Okay. All right, let me make sure we are in initiative. Uh... Look at all those dice, as if we need to roll it. <laughs> all right, so... Um... Agamar, have you, do you know where the combat tab is? Uh, yes, I know how to hit. I should, I think so. Yeah, I if have you, some functions I don't know, but I should be okay. Yeah, if you just, if you, um, if you didn't know, I didn't know how well you were at Foundry. Like, you're, right now, your initiative is after Adela. So the initiative is Adela, Gut, uh, Agamar, Gutorm, Hagen, Ignatius, whatever has Gutorm, who knows Got when it. it acts, and then Kai, and then these kind of masses of chittering eaters that are coming towards you. Um, Adela, you are looking out when Agamar and Hagen point out these kind of, these clouds of movement as they're slapping their neck, and you see these kind of thumb-sized bugs and and biters um, rise up out of the marshes itself and come flowing towards you. Uh, you're looking out that way, and 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 you might hear the goblin Gutorm's voice behind you, a little bit strident, a little bit worried. Maybe there's a little bit of fear in it. Uh, what does Eldella do as this mass of small things comes flowing towards the group? Oh, Adela totally ignores the biting uh, swarm of insects and uh, goes to help Gutorm. She's going to wade out into the... Wade, wade out yes. into... The... I don't even know if Gutorm can swim at this point, so... <laughs> okay. Um, you, that's probably going to take both your actions to wade out into the water, like to trudge through them. You know, as you see Gutorm, you know, it's almost like something drags him underwater periodically you see him jolt down jolt down and he's trying to get away and jolt down again and you see the water kind of shake and wave around him as whatever is happening he's something's trying to drag him under the water and uh you have to wade out into the water that comes up you know mid thigh and struggle through to move towards him and that's going yeah going to take your both your actions to kind of get out to go to him and grab him uh, Gutor, just stand up and quit hitting the potholes in the ground. <laughs> Agamar, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just imagine, like, you know, like a, a person who's, you know, drowning in one inch water because he can't <laughs> swim, you know, just kind of flopping <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite as deep for you. Like, it's probably just above, just, a, you know, between your knee and thigh. You do heal deeper parts. And, um, you maybe stumble or step on something that seems rounder, you know, it's I mean, slippery. <laughs> one inch for you is like 10 inch for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Agamar, uh, you see this mass, these masses of biting chiggers and bugs come over to you. They kind of blot out, you know, your view in a, in a wide area. Obviously, the map itself isn't going to show that, but they're just all over. You can't see past them. They kind of blot out the what the horizon would be on the marshlands. Uh, you hear them, though, this, this 
clicking and clattering and buzzing and just starts to build as more and more of them kind of bombard you and hit into your armor and into your forehead and they the the advanced kind of line of this mass of chittering bugs just kind of hits you uh what does agamar do out of desperation agamar just starts swinging <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, attack yeah there's no role you need for that agamar you could just roll damage as you swing through these these masks that you know as you're swinging your sword um or your axe uh they just begin to blot out you know your vision is they're just all over the place all over you uh you know they just start hitting you with with fury uh as you stand there you hear probably odella run you know wading out to gutorm you know yelling at gutorm and you start laying into this these small mass of cloud and they bite you and they hit you in the face and your eye and some land on your neck and try to crawl in your ear and you got to close your mouth and you know shrink away or rub away your nose because they're just all over the place gutorm adela reaches you and you're drugged down deep gutorm you feel something wrap around your waist you can barely straighten your knees out as whatever has you uh Pulls on you. What does Gutorm do? I put on both my daggers and I just stab them inside whatever uh, that's holding me. Okay. So it's got this hold of you and you start stabbing it. Adela is standing next to you. She may have an arm around you and then the mass of this marsh blight tentacled horror just erupts all around you um, as you're stabbing at it. I'm going to move it slightly. Uh, as you're stabbing on it, uh, I will show you what you see. So do I add one stress, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> well, when, you, when, it, when it looms up out of you and it's these massive rope and thick tentacles as wide as you know Gutorm's body uh it's possible that that you may take stress but that's not this <laughs> game Adela Gutorm this is what you see rise up out of the water wrap itself around the pillar of stone and the, the thing come 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 over the top of it one tentacle is up Gutorm's leg and around his waist and you know, down one side of his pants. And Gutorm, you may make an attack against it. I mean, Adela, if Adela haven't seen a pale uh, goblin before, she, she does know because when she she looks down at Gutorm, she meets Gutorm's eyes and you just see the ears <laughs> are hanging way more down like a scared dog. <laughs> I think really... Yellow will kind of... Re look back into your eyes and be like, is this one of your past girlfriends? Did you <laughs> piss her off? Uh, no, this one is too pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped stabbing. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, it's a normal attack, you said, or just... Uh... Yeah, you're not quite grappled yet, but you're held. Your arms are free. Um, Gutorm, you would feel it, you know. If another tentacle wraps up in you, that uh, your trouble is going to worsen. Yeah, you stab at it, Gutorm, probably with abandon, and your 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 dagger just kind of slips off of it. You know, you can't really get a purchase of it. You're probably stabbing down close to your leg. It rises up big out of you, but it's, you know, it's got this one tentacle that's still in the water that rises up and it's, you know, not on top of you yet. And you're stabbing at this kind of thick tentacle that dives down into your pants and, and it, your dagger just kind of slips off it. Um, uh, I have a twin attack, so can I do one more then? I think so. Or is that? 
No, it's not doing that automatically, right? You see oh. a little line of white, though. Every time you stab down, you see this kind of bright line of white. And, you know, the darkness of the tentacle f fades a little bit and then seeps back into it. And you kind of stab at it twice. You see these kind of bright lines of, of uh, light as your dagger hits it. Doesn't, doesn't cause a wound, doesn't cause an incision, but it's this kind of bright flare of almost light as you hit it. Uh, but uh, he doesn't see anything else. Hagen, you're kind of on the periphery with Agamar. You see these clouds of biting chiggers and bugs just start to envelop the group to the point where you could barely see, but you can see Ignatius, you know, and you probably see them hurl themselves at this fire and just hear them pop and snap and crackle as they burn and into Ignatius fiery, smoky flesh. What does uh, Hagen do? I'll try to attack. I mean, I realize it's a swarm, but he'll try his best okay. to attack. <clears throat> yeah, it's not dead. It's the... I forgot to reset it. Uh, you slash into it. Uh, Hagen, just like, just like Agamar, you're, you know, slashing at this mass of these tiny biters and, uh, blood letters that are about the size of your thumb. And, uh, you know, you have green and yellow ichor all over as you're slashing at it, as they kind of just envelop you in this cloud. Uh, does Hagen do anything else? No. Okay. Uh, Kai and Ignatius, you see Adela wade out into the water and this huge kind of tentacled beast, black with iridescence um, that shimmers these kind of scales along it, this one huge central mouth uh, and tentacles coming out of that centerpiece it kind of engulfs and belittles this little tower because it's so huge uh what does kai and ignatius do um ignatius is going to fulfill its duty and protect kai <laughs> and attack the bugs that are being a problem for him <laughs> okay see ya Lays into them. But Kai does feel like being kind. Uh, well, not really. Uh, as I put in the chat, uh, he has already called out to, like, don't uh, incapacitate that thing too much. Uh, when you put it down, uh, alive, preferably. I, I would quite like it if it was intact and alive and just unconscious. Uh, as I render it, uh, so I first it, giving it a second chance to fail on all things. And I'm going to try my sorcery. Uh, first level to not take four temporary corruption instead taking three okay so agamar you need to roll a strong test at minus two Oh, very well. Uh, the biters are all over you. They're all over your neck, all over your body. They're, you know, 
in your hair, you're slashing at them, and you just manage to keep them at bay. Uh, you probably realize that the mass of them, just if enough of them get to you, they're going to slow you down, whittle you down, that this mass of bugs will just, you know, carnivorous pick away at you until you succumb. But you are a huge barbarian from Yadessa, and you shrug it off without any problem. Uh, Hagen, can you make me a strong test at minus two? Look at you guys. <laughs> Hagen and Agrimar just like shrug off as this these cloud just kind of envelops them. The cloud, because of Ignatius's fire and smoke and ash, they form a little circle. You know, Ignatius is standing close enough to Kai where they kind of dive in at this fire, but fire to them is something to be avoided. So Kai has this kind of circle around them where it's clear like the eye of a storm as the swarm kind of covers over both um, Agamar and Hagen. Uh, and uh, are kept at bay. Gutorm, you feel the tug again and you see this huge kind of tentacle rise up and just be lying down at you it has these barbs and tough scales this kind of black uh, iridescence as it descends upon you as you're kind of stuck there trying to get yourself free uh let me do one thing though before I do that. Okay. It swipes down at you as a second one swipes down at Adela. Oh, it's attacking me too? Yeah, well, I'm just waiting for um, Gutorm to roll resist. Yeah, Gutorm, it just hits you. <laughs> Knocks you to the side a little bit, but you're kind of stuck there. And luckily, it just kind of slides off your armor. Maybe because you're small and it, Adela is next to you, it uh, miscalculates and you it just misses you just enough but you realize you can't really be in this water too long uh bad things are going to happen uh the longer you sit here and another kind of tentacle slashes down at adela it they kind of rise up all around you and it pulls itself past the the um marble kind of pillar do i get the free attack from uh long weapon you can if you'd like as it kind of envelops you in these tentacles. There's just so many of them, Adela. You probably stab at it and it and it they're just moving. All right. Uh I also get a every time uh a defense is made. I get a, another free attack. Oh, you did make defense. Okay. You can you can do that as it kind of swipes down both at you and Gutorm. Oh, shoot. I got to... All right. So I'll roll the... If I hit, can I roll without doing damage? Say that again. I got Oh, I have to make a different, uh, it's a different damage roll, not the, the regular damage roll. Oh, yeah, you could just roll it, see if it gets through, and then you can roll the damage, and I can apply it, you know, naturally. Oh, okay. 
So you do damage, and you need to roll it. You need to roll different damage. Yeah, I got instead of a D eight, it's a D six. Okay. The D four stays though. Right. So still, still amounts to nothing. Right. Uh, yeah, you strike at it again, you know, and it just kind of bounces off the tentacles and the and the hide of the of the uh, hardened kind of flesh of the of it and we'll go to Adela you see that you know it strikes at you you strike back you got Gutorm next to you that's kind of held and this thing is huge over you kind of blots out your vision in that direction you hear behind you uh, this kind of chittering mass and probably you know, Agrimar and Hagen uh, fighting something. You might look over your shoulder, but you can't really see them. This is just kind of cloud of gray cloud. What does Adela do? I'd like to try to get Gutorm free. Okay. Uh, Gutorm, are you going to help? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Definitely. If you, if you use your action... You know, I know you're after a little bit after Adela, but if you use your action to also break free, to help break free, I will give Adela uh, advantage and favor. But it would take your it would take your action to do that, Gutorm, to try to break free of it, like a concerted yeah, e- concerted I, I, effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can I can use my action for that, and I'm like, yeah, Adela, we have to we have to get out of here. Okay, we fight this thing. Yes, we, yeah, not in the water. Adela, so I would make that strong check, you know, target it, make a strong tech, uh, give yourself advantage and favor because it's going to be difficult. My strong versus it strong? <laughs> yes. So I can't do it. Advantage is just plus two, right? Right. I think you should be able to click on it's strong. Only, hit. It's only normal favor and disfavor. Well, I would put on the modifier, I would put plus two and then hit favor button two at the same time. Okay. It should roll it that way. I hope so. We'll see. Oh, look at that. So you yank, what does it look like? You grab Gutorm, you got this huge tentacle beast. Yeah, I imagine this, you know, the alien scene where uh, Ripley's it got the face hugger to her face and uh, uh, what's his name comes over and he like grabs the end of the tail and he like pushes it closer to Gutrum and then unwraps it around his body. And just yanks him out. Yeah, just yanks him out. And uh, moves towards, I think you could, Gutrum's small, so you could use your movement action to carry him to into the mass of chittering biters near, you know, or the circle around Kai uh, this round. Okay. Um, I will scoop up Gutorm. Right. Gutorm and you kind of use your actions to free Gutorm of whatever this monstrosity is of the marshland and stumble in through the, the edge of this mass of bugs and uh, chittering biters to, you know, kind of collapse near Kai and this circle around him that Ignatius oh, I is want to making. Right into Kai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't see. You know, Adele is blind as a bat. <laughs> you could probably recognize Ignatius, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Agamar, um, you're in the middle of this mass of cloud of biters and bleeders. Uh, you might be tall enough to see over them, but still, they're hitting you at all angles. You feel their little bodies, you know, bouncing off of them. You look down, you got numbers of them crawling all over you. Uh, what does Agamar do? Agamar sees the abomination and he goes straight towards it. <laughs> or tries to go straight towards it and attack. Um, I would let you do that. Uh if you want to be bold, you're going to wade out into the water as Gutorm and Adela leaves and get out. in a secret a slayer. Get out into the water and attack the monstrosity. 
that's fine. You can do that. I wouldn't. Oh, it's, good. it's good for him uh, out of it. Yeah. You okay, probably you probably look our just move his token. You probably look back there, um, Agamar. See this huge beast. You catch Adela, grab him, yank him free, and a tentacle come up and like slither past his leg. And then Adela and Gutorm scramble up out of the water. Adela mostly carrying the goblin because he's much shorter. And, you know, she gets out of ankle deep water and near a kai. And they're both free up more on solid land, not in the water itself. I think that's okay. what Agamar sees. All right. So let's cancel that. Uh, <laughs> try to swat away the uh, swarm as best as possible. You okay. tie all these swat away this swarm. You can roll that, Agamar. Do you know how to um, uh, target them? The, the talk, I can't seem target the t i can't target the token you can right click it and then go down to the little like um yeah the little on the left that's probably the easiest way at the moment since they changed some things uh, yeah, either that double, right, double click. right click yeah for players double right click yeah there you go yeah just because we can't control the tokens Like that those options only appear on tokens you can control. Yeah, you're swinging at your 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 axe goes through it, you know, through this mass. You you see little bugs and chickers, and sometimes you hit one, and others are on your axe itself, crawling down the shaft. And make a strong test at minus three for me. <laughs> you uh feel them all over you you they're in your eyes on your hair climbing up down the shaft of your axe on your hands they're biting at your softer parts trying to get down in through your neck but uh agamar just kind of shakes them off uh you look over your shoulder and you see this monstrosity start to pull itself towards the group what does agamar do or does he do anything else with his movement action what what does he see? What does he see? He sees a monstrosity pulling it itself towards. Yeah, the like group. it's Other you one? know these, it's coming out of the marsh itself. It's you know these big tentacles loom forward and kind of pull it towards the edge. You know, is moving towards you, tentacle after tentacle comes over it itself, and it just you know like pulling itself using the tentacles like arms to kind of grip the soil and and marshland and pull itself towards the edge of the marshland out of the water. You see its bulk get bigger and bigger, um, but it's moving towards you. Is it far? Would it get it here in the next turn? Yes. <laughs> it will get to you and it will get to the group on his movement action. It, as far as, Agamar can tell. Okay, try to get uh, farther away from the water. He's going to try to move away from the water. Okay, just roll me a quick test to see if you can move through this mass, you know, in the right direction. You don't stumble, fall down. <laughs> Your luck's running out, Agamar, with a natural 20. Oh, no. <laughs> so... What happens? How does he fall down to his knees and and prone? He's, he trips on a root. He trips on a root and falls flat forward. Yeah. He's in this he's in this mass of bugs. He can barely see, but he can feel it behind him. He can see this even through this mass, this cloud of bugs, and he starts to try to move and something grabs him, you know, a low spot, a deeper hole, maybe his foot slips off the hard the firmer ground into the softer ground and it gets caught up in vines and and detris and he lands you know flat on his face in a squelt into the into the marshland himself 
uh, holding his axe, luckily, but he is kind of flat and prone. Gutorm, you used your action. Hagen, yeah. uh, you see all of this. You see Adela pull Gutorm out. You see Agamar probably through the cloud of these biters and bleeders um, try to move, and then you lose him. <laughs> you might hear him fall because he's such a big guy. Uh, into the ground and stumble. Maybe he curses in Barbarian, which you probably don't know. Too many Barbarian curses yet. What does Hagen do? <clears throat> so the swarm kind of, or the swarms themselves has kind of enveloped all of us. Yeah, you're like, it's it's like you're in a fog of biters and bleeders. You're just all over. It's a huge kind of swarm that's just attracted to your body heat, to the CO2 in your breath. You know, just like anything, God forbid you ever go to Scotland, you know what I'm talking about. And um, and they're all over the place. You could barely see Kai. You could probably see Ignatius's um, uh, fieryness through the through the uh, swarm, but they're all over the place. I would probably fight my way to Ignatius just because I know that. He can okay. protect me somewhat from the swarm, sort of. Okay. Um, but I'll make an attack on my way. All right. You can do that as you mo- make your movement action to get towards him. All right. And make me a... You're pretty close to Ignatius, so make me a quick test at minus one. See if you get there without trouble. <laughs> um, you don't fall prone, but you have to fight through this mass cloud of bugs, and they're all over you, biting at you, hands crawling up your sleeves, you know, up your the bottoms of your bootlegs, um, in your pack, down your neck, and you need to make a strong test at uh, minus three. Okay. Yeah, you get through them. Get close to Ignatius. uh, And it's just a little bit clear. The heat of Ignatius kind of keeps the bugs. Maybe a few get through it and hit you on your armor. You see a few of them dive bomb into Ignatius and just crackle and pop and burst into flames. Uh, The bigger ones go flaming down to the ground like a little comet. Uh, And you're kind of in this clearing with... Kai, Ignatius, Gutorm, and Adela, you can't see... Like a little comet, I like that one. <laughs> you can't see Agamar um, through this haze and through through Ignatius burning. You probably could see the bulk of this huge tentacle beast crawling up the shore, up the shoreline. Um, Kai and... Kai, what do you have Ignatius do? Um, he is just going to carry on trying to get rid of the bugs. Uh, this creature coming towards us is a threat, potentially, but uh, so if, he, he can't abandon his uh, charge. If Ignatius does nothing but sit there, he doesn't really have anything to attack. Like, you got this kind of circle around you, eye in a storm, this mass of chittering biters are all around you, but inside that group, you know, only a few get through. Uh. And so Ignatius is kind of just standing there protecting Kai and creating this uh, circle around him where his fire keeps the swarm at bay. Right. Uh, That's circle about two hexes in which case he on the map and then he can move over and yeah if I draw it a little bit here yeah get um, Agamar in ok 
Can you see my drawing? Yep. <laughs> right. Uh, it's probably about that wide. They're probably all around you. Um, and you got this kind of eye in the storm and you can see them all around you every now and then one or two make it through. Uh, but you kind of move, Ignatius moves a little bit and just the heat kind of pushes this swarm off of a, a prone Agamar. Uh, does Ignatius do anything else? Uh, looks rather pointedly at uh, Adela and does the hand wavy thingamajig. <laughs> Really, the hand wavy thing with you? <laughs> what does that? What does that mean? <laughs> well, Adela doesn't speak Elven, and she certainly doesn't speak Fire Crackle. Uh, <laughs> but Ignatius was there when she did the big, explodey circle of red stuff. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't realize Ignatius it was a like a an intellectual creature. Yeah, uh, it is functionally another PC for me. It's it does have it okay. does have thought. In fact, uh, what vigilant ten, resolute ten, a running of seven. So he's not super clever, but. It's a creature that uh, I anu made more than uh, a golem. It's just obedient. So uh, Ignatius creates this circle that kind of pushes out the swarm, pushes the edge of its past a fallen Agrimar who's kind of probably trying to get himself up out of the muck and the monst tentacle monstrosity just pulls itself up onto the dry land out of the water, you know, squelching this kind of huge form, uh, tentacles everywhere and um, just makes it up onto the top. Uh, and Kai, what do you do as this thing rises out of the depths? Uh, right, I have to try and maintain my curse. <laughs> okay. So it has disfavor, disfavor on everything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I look at Kai's sheet and think, hmm. Two short weapons and an accuracy of five. Uh, I'm going to stay on the other side of my meat shields. <laughs> You're going to back up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Staying within the uh, protective bug circle. Uh... The masses of chittering masses don't seem to affect the tentacled abomination. Uh, they're swirling all outside of it. The tentacle abomination is like half in, half out of this protected circle. Um, Adela, it's right next to you. You can smell the marsh on it. It's this kind of fetid, rotten smell, sulfurous a little bit that kind of tingles or burns your nostrils. The tentacles that pull itself up are probably as wide as you are. Uh, with barbs and this kind of chitinous, thick, iridescent uh, scales. What does Adela do as it looms over the top of her? So Adela, following Kai's example, uh, moves behind the fiery shield. Okay. Um, and, uh, oh, it, go ahead. Uh, you... Need to make a quick roll. Oh, you can't make a quick roll. You don't have... Uh, uh, if you do move from your position, you will take an attack for disengaging. Because it has... Oh, well, he was in melee? I didn't realize he was in melee. Well, it has reach, too, like, so it's long. And, oh, okay, um, reach. Right. It is essentially in melee with everything. 
except for maybe Hagen. Okay. Uh, in that case, ooh, that's a little too, a little too close for my comfort. Okay, we'll 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 uh, try to smack it again and see if uh, see if that works. You hit it, right. Adela, but it's it's just like your staff just bounces off of it. It's it's almost feels like you're hitting stone or steel or that's how firm she hits against it. It kind of jangles up her her hands and her arms. It's not like a soft thing like you hit it and it just kind of sank into it and just doesn't seem to do much. It's like hitting you know rock, uh, hitting a mountain, and your staff just stops and just kind of shakes in your hand as you hit this huge thing agamar you're go oh, ahead my bad. go ahead so uh whenever an opponent defends against me oh attack, you get to I roll can... yeah yeah i get to roll again not that it'll amount too much <laughs> oh look at it you oh wow <laughs> Yeah, you hit it. You just kind of flick off a little piece of its chitinous tentacle, like, or maybe a barb, like a barb that's as long as your hand, you kind of break off and you see a little bit of oozing, a little bit of brightness. Um, but it's just a small little piece, Adela. Do you stay in your present position? I was just about to say, I think I will try to move anyway. Okay. Uh, it's it just too close to comfort. Yeah, it just gets attacked because you don't have Gutorm's acrobatics. Um, it just gets an attack on you as you move. Okay. And it rolls disfavor, correct? Disfavor. Yep. Kai? Right. Uh, thank goodness for that armor. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, is after defending against an attack, I also get another attack. Okay, you go ahead and roll it. I'm just looking at the rolls, what it did. Yeah, it's not calculating the... Calculating the... Um, does it have to be uh, KL1 rather than... Just KL. Although that would be weird syntax. Yes, for some reason the damage it's rolling for it is wrong. Um, and so I have to auto it. It's only doing. It's only putting five damage, which is not the damage it does. Uh, but I will start to. I will start to tell you if you take damage because it's not. For some reason, it's not calculating it and I'm not sure why that is uh, okay so Agamar you are kind of prone in the muck and you feel Ignatius close to you in the heat kind of radiate off and pushing out this area of uh, the swarm you look over as you're lifting yourself out of, trying to lift yourself out of the, the mud and this huge kind of abomination with tentacles looms over the party. What does Agamar do? Okay, so Agamar uh, tries to scramble to his feet. He tries to, from uh, the first movement action, he tries to get up. Right, so all so you do is roll quick. Bed. Yeah, roll quick and see if it just takes a move in action or see if it takes your whole action. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you can stand up with your movement action um, from the right in. yeah from the prone position. Uh, okay, so he's standing and now he's gonna go strike. Okay.
five, six. Okay. Oh, he's got, uh, he's got, um, what's that thing called? Uh, they ignores the armor. Oh, he's called. got two handed force at, yeah, yeah. At, he, so he's he, master. Yeah, he's master. And <laughs> he's a master of force. So, yeah, yeah, some, something's up with the like auto calculate. So, I'm going to have to kind of do it on hand. So, his damage would bypass. So, he does six. Um, what does that look like, Agamar, as his axe bites deep? So he swings his axe with all his might, and he and try and it acts uh, cleave deeply into this tentacle mass. Okay, um, and I would believe that would be Agarmar's complete action. Yes, end of turn. Okay, you bite into it hard, Agamar. Your axe cuts along kind of slicing this tentacle all the way down and and it's a the biggest strike that's been done so far it kind of oozes this kind of bright green and as your axe kind of falls down you look at it probably feeling some degree of relief that this thing could die that you're not all going to die out here in this fetid marsh and then just at the beginning you see that wound start to close Gutorm, you're standing there as Adela moves. You can feel Ignatius next to you. The heat of him. You look all around you and you realize this like swirling wall of mass of bugs. Uh, what does Gutorm do? I see the bugs. I take out a uh, fire arrow. I put the arrow on Ignacio, or what his name is, to fire it. <laughs> you, like, lean over and just light it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't used any movement, so I can do rapid shots okay. at, uh, um, at the tentacle thing. Kind of light two arrows and stick one in your teeth? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. So roll, roll me a 1d4. Oh, very nice. Yeah, you see that arrow hit it and sizzle. Um, and kind of leak out this kind of bright green uh, ichor. And your second shot. And that was burning too? Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to re roll a 1d4 for that. Uh, that one just skips off of it. Um, you're trying to probably fire too fast, and the arrow is on fire in your teeth, and you, you, you know, try not to burn yourself as you pull it and put it back in the bow, and it, and it just kind of hits an oblique angle and, and ricochets off the bulk of this abomination. The other arrow uh, just kind of flames there. Go ahead. I was just going to say, as a quick note, uh, Mr. Hitachi, uh, down at the bottom, before you roll, there's a double attack box. You oh, it is? Click. Yeah. Okay. Hagen, you're protected in this kind of circle. Adela backs up. Kai backs up behind the flame of Ignatius. You see Agamar engage. Gutorm is stuck up there in front. What does Hagen do? And you're muted if you didn't know. <laughs> Did you say I'm protected from the swarms? Yeah, you're just inside. Like you're standing next to Adela. You're probably near the wall of the, the edge of the swarm. And maybe every now and then one comes through and hits against you. But it's nothing you can't brush off. The fire and heat of Igna, Igna, Ignatius is kind of keeping that swarm at, at bay and that kind of inside that circle. Right, I will try to uh, 
put a larva into this beast. Okay. Uh, resolute against strong. Now, if I just use the on-screen mystical power, should I have to modify it or? No, you should be uh, able to take no. your. You should click your resolute. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I should do. You can click resolute and target it, and then target it strong. That's the easiest way, I think, to do it. Okay. So you are able to kind of implant, miraculously, uh, implant kind of these larva eggs into the marsh abomination as it is there and uh, kind of maybe see them pop a little bit, just a little bit. Hagen, mm -hmm. do you stay at your present position? I would probably take a step in that circle just to get just inside. Okay. Yeah, just to be more <laughs> more protected in case Ignatius moves. Right. All right, um, Kai. What does Ignatius do? Uh, Ignatius does move because there is now a creature to whack. Uh, do we have advantage for the number of people ganging up on it? No, it's just too big. Um, you're not really Dang. like like it's got way too many arms and too many tentacles. Like it's not a a being of that nature where you could probably get advantage on it. Mm -hmm. It's now extra on fire. Okay. Yeah, you slice down at it, and it starts on fire um, on the surface. You know, you see the fire kind of lick up. You know, the surface of it crackle along its edge. Uh, um, up kind of the bottom of his body and um, uh, that fire kind of lights up around it. It raises this mass of tentacles, Gutorm, Ignatius, Agamar that's in front of you and we'll see what happens. One to two is God, is Gutorm, three to four is Ignatius, and five to six is Agamar. All right, Ignatius for this attack as it raises this mass of tentacles and just throws them down at the party. My poor boy with no abilities. Oof, that's probably not the correct damage. No, you take four more, so you take seven. Ignatius takes seven, my fault. Oof. The uh, poor, poor <laughs> small dream boy. We'll roll uh, again. Um, one to two is Gutorm, three to four is Ignatius, five to six is Agamar. Gutorm, this mass of tentacles just pummels the ground. You see one clatter into Ignatius, you know, fires on it. It's licking up the side. It just hits Ignatius across the body and nearly crumples it, the fiery uh, being down to its knees, and it kind of stands back up. Uh, and then you look up, and it's like the sky has gone black, and this kind of huge tentacle just goes to fall on top of you. Skatom just stands there. He still drops a little bit. <laughs> wins. Gutorm oh. wins. Yeah. Uh, is, is it actually rolling disfavor if it's keeping the lowest? Because isn't it a roll under thing, or is it? Yeah, it is. Like I, I'm actually hitting dis I haven't took took off disfavor. Okay. Now yeah. can can Ignatius take corruption? Um, yes, apparently. You, okay, um, Gutorm, you can resist that. Uh, 
<laughs> Wait a minute, let me look at the numbers first. It rolled four, five, four, five, plus four is eight, and you're, oh, you rolled, you rolled five, it does nine. Um, Gutorm, you take four points of damage. Kai, as that tentacle hits Ignatius, you see this black line blossom across his fiery form, his smoke and ash, this kind of filigree of black, creeping darkness. Uh, roll 1d6, and that's how many temporary corruption he takes. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Uh, I'm really, really good at mixing out <laughs> on these things. We're going to have two abominations. Soon. So you just see like parts of Ignatius just blacken and fall off. You know, like the fire's been put out, like ash and sand are being put on him. Parts of him just gets mottled black. His, his light dims, the circle contracts. Uh, around you much closer than it was uh and he meets his threshold so you yep. you i believe it's 1d4 yep okay and he's presently at 7 corruption the 7 total yep yes yeah, 7 total let me shrink the shrink the circle Does the alien burst out of his chest? <laughs> right. Gutorm. This huge yeah, tentacle amazing. falls on top of you. The sun gets, you know, the air is blotted out. It's as big as you are. Barbs everywhere. Uh, it's like this mass of black that hits you. Um, you kind of maybe look to the side and see Ignatius blacken wobble his light dims you maybe it flickers almost the internal part like he completely has to restart like it goes down to a little sim cinder that's in the center of him everything goes dark this swarm kind of tries to come in and then he brightens back up a little bit but you can see his um, light is to avoid this <laughs> um this is a somewhat negative experience Sure. Uh, I would like to activate my channeling. Oh, and take uh, it to yourself. So, uh, I will take his six temporary corruption uh, okay. into myself. Now, your okay. current your current is three, so that would put you over your threshold. Uh, I misread how that works. I have to make a resolute test each time. <laughs> I do it to only receive one. Oh, okay. So you can make so, a resolute test and take it onto himself. So you uh, take yes. How so? What you're using channeling? Um, uh, yeah, novice channeling, and to absorb his to receive his temporary corruption, but the novice sorcery uh, make a successful resolute roll. Uh, each time I suffer corruption, I only receive one point. Ah, okay. What does that look like? Um, as you siphon off the corruption that hits. Uh, there is... Kai is, like, pulling it through the flames of Ignatius, letting it burn away. Okay. Uh, as it's pulled in. And so he would just be at zero temporary right uh yep uh ignatius has no corruption okay and how kai has four. four how often can kai do that uh that is a reaction so i can okay uh, <laughs> i can do the um maybe good channeling... will survive <laughs> yeah i can do the channeling trick every time i see someone do receive corruption okay and the sorcery trick every time i <laughs> Receive uh, Gutorm. Corruption. 
you uh, can I ask something? What is sure. the pain, the, the threshold on toughness? Uh, I have four left, and my threshold is five. Yeah, the threshold is just you um, get knocked prone, if I remember oh, correctly. On if you take more, if you take more damage in a single hit than your toughness threshold, you are either knocked prone or it gets a free attack. Your choice. Right. Yeah, you're stunned. Yeah, it's just like when you stun him and it puts him prone, you get to choose if it goes prone and attack. Same thing would happen to you. So it has to go over your threshold every time. So even though he's at a current of four, it doesn't mean that if he goes over his current of four, like he goes to six or eight, that he has to roll for prone. It's only if he takes, if he only takes his threshold hey, damage yeah. all in one hit. Um, yeah. But he does have to roll 1d6 for corruption. I have. Did you? Do I have to? Yeah, you have, have to. to. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> You've seen Kandu succumb to co corruption. Oh, <laughs> snap. Oh, my goodness. Alrighty. Oh, corruption, snap. the party killer. <laughs> it yeah. is. The sad thing is, is we had mostly fighters, so the fighters are the weakest when it comes to corruption. So, Kai, you siphon. I yep. I anticipate that Adela, Agrimar, Hagen, and Gutorm see this. Like, the mass of the abomination hits the Ignatius, the flaming servant, and hits Gutorm, the goblin. You see this burst of corruption in both of them ignatius maybe stutters and then you just see it siphon almost like this black kind of swirling mass and hit ignatius a uh, hit kai maybe rock him back a little bit as he takes that corruption into his body himself protecting both gutorm and his flaming servant uh kai what do you do as you kind of teeter a little bit taking this corruption into your body um i generally regret the fact that i have no offensive abilities <laughs> uh and i maintain the curse attempt to maintain this curse on okay uh the beast yep it's still cursed all right adela and hagen as this circle, I guess the circle wouldn't de decrease, so I should make it bigger. No, right yeah, yeah. Be before I have them roll <laughs> something they shouldn't. Mm. Uh, they're still inside the circle. Okay. Oh, uh, Jane, you might want to look at uh, Aura's module, so you wouldn't have to do that circle thing. Oh yeah, this is our. You know, we don't. I don't use it all that much, but it's. Not too bad. It's pretty quick. Yeah. Um, this is probably just like situational. Adela, you're in this kind of protected circle. You see Kai take this corruption as both Gutorm and the Flaming Servant are hit. Ignatius, you're kind of back there, somewhat protected from this beast, this abomination of the marsh. What does Adela do? So Adela yells to... Uh, uh, Gutorm and uh, Agamar, you know, gather around. And then she raises her staff up into the air and starts chanting, however, I will hold my initiative until after Gutorm. Okay. Now, how long will it take her to cast that? It's a, it's an action. Okay. Yeah, I know we've been playing it that way, but okay. So you're yelling yeah, it, to it actually, because it's an action because it's a staff magic. You're yelling at them to move. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving them the option to to get out of the way of this. Whatever's going to happen next, um, uh, right. Agamar probably has no idea what that is. Uh, he hasn't seen it before. Yeah. Gutorm has seen it before, and. Good to understand that he siphoned uh, the corruption from him. Uh, I think he feels that, it. That I think he. 
I think he okay. feels it enter his body and then it's whisked away. I, it's up to you whether Gutworm can see that the tails of that corruption leave. Like he feels it. Like he probably feels it almost becoming that corruption seeds him and then it suddenly lightens and moves out of his body. I, I like he think, transfers it. I think he feels it, but he doesn't quite understand it. Uh, I think. Okay. <clears throat> um, Agamar, uh, what do you do as you're standing there before this abomination? So Agamar uh, watches what's happening in shock, and, re and he uh, knows he needs to act quickly. So he draws back his his axe and takes another mighty swing as combat action. And he doesn't get armor. That's a pretty good roll. Um, nine points total. Because you bypass his armor. Yeah, you... What does that look like? That's a pretty mighty swing. You cut, like, down through the center of its body. Um, what does that look like? And what does Agamar do next? Or is it does alive he... still? Is it yes. alive still? Yeah, it's still alive. <laughs> it's so Agamar. Agamar. <laughs> So Agamar takes a mighty swing with his axe, and he takes uh, and he and he cleaves into the abomination, cuts through the uh, external armor on the creature. But to his horror, the thing is still moving. <laughs> right, <laughs> that is a horrible thing to see. It's still. Sh you know, you might see a few tentacles get quiver and drop to the ground a little bit, but but it's still alive. End of action. Okay. You stay in your position. Gutorm. Uh, you can't yeah. manage too much more of that. Adela screams at you from behind. You're, you're wobbling on your legs. Uh, what does Gutorm do? Well, I'm, I hear the screams from Adela, and I, I know what's up, so um, I'm moving in close to Adela. Okay. And you get to roll a quick test so not, not to suffer an attack as you leave that space. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't worry, it has disfavor. Uh, good term. You do you have do. experience, or do you want me to I'm roll the saying. attack? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use one XP. I think. <laughs> Since you got hit last time with disfavor. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. <laughs> you do that often. All right. Yeah. You you stumble away as you're trying to get away from it and its tentacles reach out and try to batten you down. Uh you actually suffer three uh, four more than that, so five total. Five points of damage, I'm down. Okay. Uh, it just flattens you, Gutorm. You turn to, to move towards Adela. Hagen, Adela, and Kai can see it, and it and it slams you down into the ground. Like, literally, this little goblin is just put face down into the, to the muck inside. Roll a 1d6. Roll low. <laughs> no, I'm going to do a, I'm gonna do a five. Least <laughs> oh, four. Uh, <laughs> Pretty close. Unless anything Quite happens, much. Gutorm, you will suffer four points of damage. It will go over four points of stuff. It will go over. Okay. Uh, the group would see Gutorm just flatten down into the 
ground, huge tentacle just like wraps around him and slams him down, maybe picks him up off his feet a little bit as he's moving towards Adela, slams him back down on the ground. Uh, it's black all around him, and this blackness kind of swirls, lifts up out of Gutorm itself, and then hits Kai uh, all over. And Kai, you take one point of yep. corruption. Gutorm feels annoyed that boot was so interesting looking. <laughs> Hagen, Adela yells at you to stay back. Gutorm is on the ground near you, this huge tentacle next to you. What do you do? <clears throat> I was going to continue to concentrate. Oh, actually, uh, Gene, this is where my healed action takes place. Okay. Uh, you could do that. You're going to roll Blood Mist. Correct. Uh, blood Storm. Isn't blood it? Storm. Yeah, Blood Storm. Blood Storm, Blood Mist, Blood City. Takes another D4, Gene. Okay. And what's that from, Hagen? Uh, the lava boil. Larva. Oh, okay. So, oop, I'm on the wrong character sheet. What does that look like? What happens, Adela, as you cast Blood Mist? So as Adela, you know, slams down the staff into the ground, the gym lights up and this red mist forms uh, in a circle around us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Argon, uh, I'm, I'm afraid you're kind of out of that circle. <laughs> uh, so anybody caught within the storm uh, is blinded uh -huh. uh, and must pass a vigilant test. And then, you know, the second part of it is the failed or a second chance to fail on test. And then there's the drowning effect, which aims for the mouth and nose, which penetrates, dealing a D4, ignoring armor. And all I got to do is pass the initial one, right? I think so. I could have sworn there was one on here for that. All right. Does it do a right. D4 now? Yes, it says a D4 as long as I'm concentrating. Okay. So you would roll that D4 this turn. All right. So what happens is Hagen is concentrating on Larva Boil, and you just see, you know, the flesh of the abomination pop, pop. As all these larva boil kind of scatter up its bulk, and then this red mist or red storm comes from Adela from her staff and just blossoms out, and you see it kind of go into the mouth of the abomination, and the combination of the boil and the red mist and Agamar's hits it kind of shudders. And although Agamar can see the wound that he made starting to close, it just kind of reopens. And then the whole thing just collapses to the ground. You can kind of feel it hit. It's like this huge bulk probably shakes up your feet up to your ankles and it collapses to the ground and everything goes silent aside from the storm that's kind of circling around Ignatius. Uh, all right. Argon, I'm sorry, you take D4, too. <laughs> <laughs> Agrimar takes D4? <laughs> yeah, he takes the because it's anybody outside of my melee range. Okay. Uh, uh, like. He... He takes it into his mouth, then. Four points of damage. Yeah, four points of damage in your uh, until she expires the the, the, um, the spell. 
it's this red mist goes into your mouth and nose. You think you're good, and all of a sudden you're covered with this kind of red mist that goes over your eyes. You can't see anything, and you feel like it's choking you. You probably don't realize where it's coming from, or maybe you do because it's a, a barbarian kind of spell. And um, and he takes four he takes four damage, and he can't see. He's kind of blinded all of a sudden. Yeah, imagine your your vision goes red as as it just blocks everything. Okay, so he's blinded. He's blind. Yeah, for the moment. It probably won't last long. <clears throat> uh, did you? You need to make a vigilant roll, don't you? Rather than being blinded, or is that no? no that's on your turn, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He'll be yeah. briefly blinded until yeah, briefly. Adela, you know, just you know, lets the spell go away. I'm sure that won't last too long. Uh, so what happens as this beast collapses to the marsh? You're kind of in this protected cir circle with Ignatius. They're swirling around you. Gutorm is laid out, unmoving. Uh, Agamar, you're blinded all of a sudden with a red haze in front of your m mouth, and you're kind of choking. Uh, what does Agamar do? So Agamar... Uh... Size and relief, and size internally. <laughs> creature is is no longer moving, but he is now confronted with this other horror. He doesn't know what's going on. Uh, and the swarm is there too, right? Yeah, the swarm. You can hear it. You can't see it, but you can feel that chittering, flying wings, insect you know, mass sound around you. The Adela would know that the blood storm that goes out into it just kind of seeps around it, but she might see some bodies fall, but it doesn't really seem to diminish the cloud of it. But Agamar would hear them. He's just suddenly blinded, red haze in front of his eyes, and he can hear them off to his left, a wall of them around him. But, you know, in the center, he could know that it's safe or he doesn't hear them to his right. And he would know that before he got blinded anyways. Okay, so he just braces himself and and uh tries to tries to tries to stay calm. Okay. Uh Gutorm, can you make me a death save? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this supposed to be a skull thing on my... It's at the very top. Oh, it there, says, I see. I yeah, see. it says death. <laughs> All right, you're still alive, Gutorm. Um, you're back in that high grass before the long house of the barbarians. Uh, you hear training, steel on steel, laughter. You know, it's hazy. You kind of sit up out of this tall grass all of a sudden, and you've returned to this place you've been before. You probably hear the sound of arrows suk, 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 somewhere in the distance. The sky is yeah, blue. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Guto remembers this place, and he he, he smiles and, <laughs> and and thinking maybe. Oh, maybe Lazarus would be here. Maybe Lazarus should be here. Uh, he he might hope to see Kandu, but Kandu isn't in this place. This isn't a place for Kandu. Oh, he, yeah, you kind of sit up, Gutorm, and you look to your left, and there's Lazarus. He kind of looks at you and says, Goblin, what the hell are you doing here? Well, it's, uh, it seems like it's my time. Well, they let anyone, anything in this place, but you are, you are Gutorm. Fire shot. Come on, then. Let's go. The games are almost yeah. beginning. 
And then he picks you up out of the tall grass. Yeah, I, I follow him. The party's out in the marsh. Everything is silent except for this mass of bugs that are circling around where Ignatius is. Gutorm is completely still face down in the ground. Uh, Hagen, what do you do? <clears throat> So who is, Gutorm is, is down? Yeah, Gutorm is like obviously down. His bow is strung out. He's face down, you know, on his chest, um, laid out. I'm in a happy place though. <laughs> Moment. We have to fix my character, but I'm going to continue with trying to I'll give him some life. Okay. Yeah. We can look at it later. Or I'll look at it this week. Do I just roll it? <clears throat> yeah, so you would roll resolute to do life giver, I believe. Oh, just do just do a res straight resolute. Right. And you wash away corruption first. Okay, and then you one do one d four. Okay, um, Gutorm is a jolt. You're there walking with Lazarus. You Cor corruption. You see archers, you know, in a line. They're all laughing. Some of them got two arrows in a hand. Some of them got three between their fingers. And you just see them. And um, it's probably an incredibly happy vision. And then all of a sudden, you're face down, choking on mud and smelling the mire of Black Leech Rift. Uh, how does Gutorm come to? Maybe lifting my head, spitting out some mud, <laughs> thinking, saying low to myself, like, damn, I was looking forward to those games. <laughs> and uh, and uh, try to stand up, put myself up somehow. Yeah, you can. You rock back onto your heels. You know, you got your your ribs ache, and you probably got a few fractured ribs, and uh, everything hurts everywhere. You're covered in mud. It's all over your face and in your nose and probably in whatever salted fish you have left. And uh, you're just covered in mud. It's matted through your ears. Uh, and, you know, you kind of goop it out of your eyes a little bit as you, you come to. Yeah, and I, I I stand up. I look down to the mud at the at the form in the mud of my goblin, <laughs> like, like the shape of me in the mud, <laughs> and uh, look at the hole while it fills up with water or whatever. Yeah, you're slightly above the water line, so you just see like this flattened, you know, goblin with his <laughs> arms out, maybe even yeah. the, even his nose, you know, a little indentation from his nose it's it's a perfect gutorm you know outline and uh you know he sees that in there you know his ear is one ear is full of mud and he kind of sees the outline of his ear uh adela what happens to the bloodstorm well once the creature is done uh i'll release the bloodstorm uh especially since uh Hegmar has kind of called it. And, okay. Uh, and Ignatius. <laughs> he's Ignatius a person breathe? too. Yeah, he's he blind too. Uh, yeah, no, he, he breathe. I mean, he counts as a character. Yeah, I think he's he would, on fire. I think he I, would, I think you're probably just putting him out. Yeah, I think he. <laughs> I think he could still be blinded. It just covers him, True. like it. You know, it's like a all over him. He he is. Yeah. He, he doesn't have extra center person. <laughs> 
Yeah, sorry, I didn't think about uh, Ignatius because I was like, oh, it's fire. He's not really affected by this kind of thing. <laughs> He's fire. Let's just drown him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was kind of waiting to see if he was going to march out into Marsh, but that didn't happen. So you let go of the blood mist. Um, Agamar, you're kind of there. Maybe you're on your knees. Maybe you're standing swaying a little bit, and the blood red in front of your vision just starts to fade. Um, maybe you feel the wetness on your face and you look down at yourself and you're just kind of covered in this red smattering everywhere. Um, what does Agamar do as his vision returns? He sees Gutorm, you know, struggle up and wipe in mud and maybe like edge the tracing of his form in the mud as if it's you know, something important. Uh, what does Agamar do? So Agamar uh, glances about and asks if everyone's okay. No. If everyone's alive. <laughs> I think we're doing better than you seem to be. Mm, I think that's true. Agamar's current toughness isn't zero, though. I ask Adela, can you use that blood mist against these swarms? Adela probably knows it. It wouldn't really affect them. Hmm. Also, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She has to uh, recast it as a ritual to store it in the staff each time. You would know if you walk next to Ignatius, like, you know, the swarm is event, you know, is going to part ways around you. Like Ignatius's heat, you'd have to, you know, stand close to him like you are now and move through the marsh. Eventually, the, the swarm is going to dissipate. Uh, it's only going to stay there so long, even though it doesn't have a brain. They don't have brains. Collectively, it's going to give up. Uh, it's not getting fed here and it's going to filter out and move back across the marsh uh, in some time. Uh, and so the, the chittering and the mass of blood letters uh, eventually are going to go away and dissipate. And so just standing next to Ignatius is going to cause them to eventually move on move back through the marsh looking for other things to render down to bone and you're kind of sitting on this firmer ground as Gutorm picks himself up and you're looking out at that post and this mass of abomination just starts to dissolve really body falling apart um, into a mass of uh, putrid kind of thickness what does what would the company do now as they catch their breath in this gutrum is why we say we don't chase after boots <laughs> unless this boot was uh once uh, a black clothes speaking of boots what you do with it yeah it's out yeah, there probably <laughs> it's not so good Well, that probably just because it smells horrible coming from you. <laughs> Can we see the boot? No, it's probably all the... Uh, I threw it away. Inside it. Yeah, it's probably floating out there. You know, soul well, up. Um, soul up. You're partly soul up past the mass in the, in the water, which is at the moment still. Well, I'd like to look at the boot and see if it's like of Ambrian design or if it's like got some kind of this is typically, you know, black cloak wear or whatever. Yeah, you wade back out there a little bit and use your staff and pull the boot out. And it's obviously Ambrian made. It's not a barbarian manufacture. Um, it's kind of sticky inside, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gutorm would know that stickiness is blood. Uh, I think I'd uh, hold up the boot and uh, say, well, I think we found your cloaks. 
Seems they ran a fellow the monster. Now, can we get on dry land and towards Thistlehold? Uh, yes, let's. Although, uh, once we're firmly on dry land, I'd appreciate it if we all sat down for an hour or so and I could actually finish a project I've been trying to work on for whilst we're marching rather unsuccessfully. By the way, how, how much corruption did I take? You didn't take you any did. because Kai took it oh, all I for you. I didn't take any. Uh-uh. Oh, both times? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. He saved you from becoming an abomination. <laughs> because I can't take much corruption. <laughs> do you... Yeah. I, do I you, really need to get strong gift uh, depth soon. Do you think Gutorm would... I mean, he felt the corruption. Like, he felt this blackness seep into his flesh and then all of a sudden was whisked away. Do you think he would have an idea of what that was or it, he just feels lucky? I think he he doesn't have an ID. He doesn't fully understand, but uh, uh, he's a strong believer in luck. So <laughs> <laughs> for, for now, until he, he knows better, he think he just was lucky. That or he keeps going back to that place whenever he's near death. This barbarian longhouse in the high golden grass where they're testing themselves in camaraderie perhaps he feels gifted yeah he, keep, he keeps getting sent back like it's not his time <laughs> i mean that place is a place <clears throat> he don't think he should be as a goblin so being in that place as a goblin he he yeah may feel a little gifted Agrimar is as sorry, Agamar, as uh, the party is recovering and Adela kind of shows you this boot, you would probably know you've hunted a number of black cloaks and Ambrians it. Sure enough, that is a black cloak's boot, just the way it's made and the buckle along the bottom of the ankle where the bottom bones of the ankle on either side and, and the, the toe shape. And the soul is obviously of Ambrian knit make. And you've probably hunted black cloaks before. And, you know, this is a boot of a black cloak. Uh, what would Agamar think or say when Adela feels that whoever he was hunting, these Templars and Agamar, have probably came across the same monstrosity and just were sucked down into the marsh? He tells the group that he thinks this boot is uh, a, a black cloak boot, um, and maybe their bodies are in the muck somewhere. They might have their stuff might still be nearby. <laughs> is he gonna go hunt that hunt for him? Well, are there any signs? Are there any signs like uh, any like aside sign? from the boot? Like if he walks out to the pillar and the the stone plaque and you know he's maybe he's much bigger so maybe the water just goes up past his knees he may look past it and he may see floating shreds of clothing he doesn't necessarily see bodies at the moment um does he go like hunting around digging with his axe through the muck as kai kind of sits down and is doing something Obviously, Agamar has never seen or probably interests him at the moment. Well, Agamar will just check the the uh, the pillar, but not go into the water. He won't, but he won't go into the water. Okay. He'll just try to look around the pillar and see. Yeah, the pillar itself has some splashes of blood on the back end. Um, he may see maybe a handle of a sword just barely peeking out of the water. He probably sees past it. Um, past that pillar that you know there's more of the martian water and maybe 50 yards or 45 meters then it looks like there's a ridge of solid land but between him the the back end of the pillar and that ridge it's just 
water. Um, he's probably standing in water that's, you know, just above his knees uh, at the back end of the pillar. He looks up at the, the plaque and he sees writing, but it's obviously not barbarian, so he has no idea what it says. And um, that's what he notices. He thumbs back at the pillar. He goes back on dry land and thumbs back at the pillar and asks, can anyone read this? <laughs> 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 Gutorm has seen the plaque. Gutorm, you don't have any idea what it says. <laughs> oh, it's a it's it's a pillar there. Yeah. So you walked out. There was like a stone pillar that was about three or four feet tall. Yeah, I, with I, a... I know. I I heard, but I mean, Gutorm, he didn't notice that pillar with the tablet because he only saw the boot. <laughs> he only saw the boot. Because <laughs> does Gutorm know how to read any language? No. Okay. Nice to know. Uh, I don't think I don't think he does. Uh, I I don't see any reason he does. He I mean, he he wish he did. So sometimes he just pretends. Okay. Uh, Adela and Hagen, Agamar comes back and you know talks about the pillars writing on that plaque. The plaque itself is part of the pillar. Like it's all one piece of stone. Like it was made or chiseled out of one piece of stone. You know, there's writing on the top. Um, Adela probably, there's no way you would have noticed it while you were trying to pull Gutorm out of the muck. What does Hagen do? I'm like, well, I can't read that shit. <laughs> Maybe the elf can when the elf finishes, whatever the hell he's doing. All right. Adela, what about you as, as Kai is doing something that looks specifically probably terrible? Uh, what does Adela do? Well, don't look at me. Maybe I'll try to think of something historically lore master wise. Yeah, you, you actually lore master. Um, you can understand text or human language. Right, human language, but only uh, human language. So if it's Elven, I can't. Oh. Is there Since, human language? Yeah, uh, adept. You need it, adept. It takes another. Yeah, it yeah. needs adept to do outside human. Okay. Oh wow. Um, what I would let you do though, just for giggles, while Kai is doing whatever, is because I'm sure Adela's lore master trying to learn as she's going, and she was just at the Hall of a Thousand Tears, where there's Elvish all over the place, and the language itself. You could you could roll a. Uh, what does she roll for, Lore Master? Cunning. Cunning. Yeah, you could roll cunning at minus five, or make it hard and see if you you can piece it out, having just been to the Hall of a Thousand Tears. <laughs> yeah. I surprised I made that. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? A five or five or below? You needed it. Uh, six below, but yeah. <laughs> So you wait out there again, Adela. Look up at this kind of plaque as Kai is is performing something Elvish that you probably haven't seen. And you look at this Elvish script, which is obviously Elvish, and you, you start picking out words. And it starts making sense to you um, after just being in a Hall of a Thousand Tears. And you pick out, you know, River and Made to Rush and... Uh, drown them, silence them from evil, and the roots of the temple run deep. You don't get everything in that uh, plaque, but you get most of it. Like, you probably missed the small words. And it's a plaque that looks like it was raised and written by elves to mark what happened to the Black Leech Rift and old Simbar um, so that that knowledge wouldn't be lost. Or those who could read the knowledge would understand what Black Leech Rift was and why it's a marsh and what those towers are and how deep they may go. Okay. Well, I'll pass on what I, what I know. Okay. Kai, what are you doing? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but go I ahead. have to go AFK for like... Uh 
couple of minutes. I have to help the kid. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, be right back. Um, Kai, what are you doing? Uh, I am finally getting around the locking down that spider. <laughs> The, uh, what were they, trickle stings that we yeah, yeah. fought? So the you... trickle sting that uh, we kidnapped. Uh, I have finally gone around to uh, now, do you locking have to... its will. Do you have to make a, you have to make a roll for it? Uh, I don't believe I do. I think. Yeah, I don't see uh, it. Uh, yeah, I just have to put this on a creature, which takes an hour to do because it's a ritual, uh, and the link can be broken. Okay, so you're carving it into it. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, I like to imagine Kai's been trying to paint the glyphs on its uh, abdomen whilst we walk <laughs> like, not just, oh, fuck, I can't do this on the move okay fuck. we have to sit down somewhere hmm. yeah I don't see that it um, causes you to roll anywhere like res resolute to see if it works uh, no I which is it interesting is just, uh, it goes off uh, okay ritual, like powers, they can cause corruption of person that learned, and then each time they used each tradition. Uh, does ritualist say that? Uh, uh, comes, uh, 1d4 if it does not belong, but I have. Uh, yeah, I don't have to roll to cast a ritual. Okay. So what does that look like? What do the others see as you're carving this ritual in this spider? That's uh, partially dead, but... Adela is the own... Since she must have ritualist herself, mm -hmm. is the only one who can understand anything about what I'm doing. <laughs> For everyone else, it just looks like I'm painting a, a spider that's faintly twitching uh, before scratching some weird mark uh, into its abdomen. And what does it do? Like, what, what does that look like after you put in the mark? Oh, um, I let the spider go and it is now very happy to serve me. <laughs> uh, it probably uh, it's a spider, so it's not very smart, and it's not like I actively control its things, but it serves me to the best of its abilities, so it probably treats me in the same way it was treating the spider mother, brood mother. Okay. I'm going to put it on the... and give you... give you ownership of it. It'll say trickle string enslaved, uh, it, and put it under your name as owner on the That's character good, sheet. I'm going to turn it into a monster. Right, it's it's damaged <laughs> fairly fairly much given what it Yeah. <laughs> but okay. uh you can the embryos and heal it. Agamar, you watch this elf like bring this trickle string which you obviously know what a trickle string is being barbarian. And almost like it's a pet. Uh, does Agamar say anything? Agamar uh, has seen this stuff before, uh, having dealt with uh, witches. Witch. Yeah. So he just snorts, wipes <laughs> the gore off his body as best as possible, <laughs> and looks around and asks if anyone has anything to drink. <laughs> Hagen. And I don't mean water. <laughs> right. <laughs> Does anyone have spirits? I don't think so. Uh, but 
Not on me, no. Mm -hmm. We got some salted fish. <laughs> They're a little and smashed. And I, and I looked that. down in my bag and it doesn't look any good anymore. And I'm quite disappointed. Um, Hagen, uh, as a cartographer who's been alone and you've probably never seen this sort of thing, maybe, but probably not, um, does Hagen react in any particular way? You are muted. Adela, do you uh, say anything to Kai? No, like, I understand what she's doing, or he's doing, so I okay. think Adela's probably, like, munching on some trail snack or something. Right, Kai, Kai is pretty cloistered. He hasn't been out of the elven world very much. He really doesn't know much about barbarian villages and customs or anything like that so he has no idea the group is sitting there as the swarms kind of dissipate um you come to this pillar and probably recognize that the templars and the black cloaks have come to a grisly untimely end um it's around midday ish three four in the evening, what do you do? Well, I think once Kai's done, we should continue on our way. Okay. Heading back to where we started and then south. Down the Malgamore River. Right. Okay. Yeah, and... Um, that's pretty easy to do. Um, both Agamar and Adela and Hagen, who is a cartographer and a mapper, finding the Malgamore is not hard. You kind of trudge through the, the marsh of the earth towers of the Black Leech Rift, and you go up and down a number of the tower tops. Uh, I don't expect anyone's going to delve deep at the moment. And you make it to the the banks of the Malgamore. The marsh kind of changes as you're moving. As you get further away from the area of the Black Leech Rift, you s hear the sound of rushing water. You know, the air brightens up. You eventually make the banks where there's a bank of maybe 20 yards or 18 meters um, when you come out and hear the sound of rushing water, the air is kind of bright. You might be dazzled by the sunlight, you know, off the um, Malgamar that kind of twinkles, you know, and uh, refracts. And it's easier stepping. The ground is firm. It almost feels like you've entered an oasis around that small strip of bank around the Malgamore. The air is cleaner and you're outside from underneath the eaves of Davakar, and you proceed southwest along its banks, really just marching kind of along the Davakar. Who's in front or who's leading? It's, it's not really you, following the Malgamar is simple. It's just really what, what are you doing as you move down the Malgamar? Who's, who's, watching forward if no one else is in the front uh um Agamov will be in the front but he he is big and makes a lot of noise <laughs> yeah Agamar, he, curses, he, he, curses, he curses a lot every so often too <laughs> he walks heavy <laughs> um he's really really I mean, loud he unseeing Adela, who doesn't see anything except it right in front of her. Right. Adela's not really a good watcher either. Okay, Agamar, you're in front. They're kind of following in the wake of this you, this kind of huge barbarian. 
with a giant axe and um, roll vigilant for me. So I was afraid you'd ask that. <laughs> You are probably cursing, or maybe you you go around a little bend, and you know you in a rocky area of the shoreline, and you know your steps go heavy, and you're gonna have to watch yourself walking around some bigger walks or some little tide pools or little areas that are a little bit um, wetter, and you don't really see it really fast. Um, uh, the rest of the group see it, and maybe you just keep walking forward, and then and they may slow down. But you're just kind of trudging forward. And then, you know, you don't hear them probably behind you as close. And your kind of head snaps up. Maybe you're ready for some bad things out of to have a car. And you see in the river probably um, 25 meters or 30 yards out into the river, you see a flat barge-like boat. It looks like it's riding on an anchor and it's twirling a little bit. You know, the current is pushing it kind of in this lazy quarter circle with the back end downstream and every now and then the front end dips into the water and you see kind of a wash of water over the edge it looks like it has barrels on it and debris and crates uh but you don't see anything else so agamar uh points out the uh the barge and says that uh, it looks like it's been attacked. And there might be some stuff on it. <laughs> Hagen, what be do you say to that? <laughs> is the barge far from the shore? Is it? It's is about it... it's about uh, thirty yards, twenty five meters. Like, it's not in the middle of the river, but it's, you know, you have to swim out to it. It wouldn't be a difficult swim, but you know you'd have to swim. It's difficult well, would, if you can't I would, swim. <laughs> right, I would, I would swim. Hagen, you start stripping down, because you sure the heck aren't going to swim with all your gear out there. No. No. Uh, what would Hagen take? Hagen, you want to swim out there. You suggest swimming. Um, what do you others think of that idea? Hey, if he wants to swim, let him swim. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, Hagen, you start stripping down. Um, what would you take? Um... Probably nothing to. Like you might be able to swim out with your fencing sword, but you're not going to swim out with your shield or, you know, all your other gear, your cartographer gear, you know, that sort of thing. You are. Your armor would probably have to be removed. You know, swimming out there with your scalds, Keras would be. Yeah. Would, you know, you expect I... that would be a bad idea. I probably would, wouldn't even take the sword. You just swim out, you know, shirt and yeah. and undergarments or you know pants that sort of thing. Okay, Hagen starts stripping down. Uh, Adela, I'm resetting the total the temporary corruption. Okay, yeah, I could do that for her. Adela. What do you think about this idea? Mm, like Kai, I'm like, well, you know. Let the boys measure their, you know, stamina. Agamar, are you going to swim out there with um, Hagen? Does he know how to swim? I mean, do we yeah, I think, uh, I think most people know how to swim. I somewhat leave that up to you. If you think he's not a good swimmer, you make a strong test. If you think it's, you know, it's not that far, really. 30 yards isn't that far. Most people can make it that far. Um uh, Yadessa land 
Yeah, sure. He's gonna he's gonna have to take off his armor. So he's gonna be take off his uh, full suit of scale armor. <laughs> right. Take off his pack, and he'll have to, uh, I guess, just bring his axe, and that's about it. Yeah, I think you would make a strong test if you're taking that double axe. It's pretty darn heavy. You know, you're swimming one handed. You're a big dude. Oh, it's looped. It's actually looped. Oh, you back. could probably tie it to your back and see if you make it. I I yeah, would yeah. I would let it's you always, do that. It's Okay. I would let you do that. You're going without armor, going without anything. Um, uh, okay. Gutorm, these big men, well, one really big man and the Ambrian are going to swim out to this bar as this, you know, derelict on anchor or riding on anchor. Uh, what does Gutorm do? He walks carefully to to the edge of the water and and picks up a small rock and throws it inside and see if he can see any tentacles. <laughs> you throw it at the barge? Yeah, more like just out in the water between the barge and, and dry land. Yeah, you throw it a you throw the rock out. You know, you see it, you know, plop down into the water. The the amalgamar is pretty pristine water. It looks um, fresh. Uh, you don't notice anything besides, you know, the plop of the rock that you throw out part way out. Uh, I would let you roll a vigilant at minus two. You see a smattering of clothing and armor past these broken barrels and broken crates and um, probably a prone figure near the center leading, you know, halfway off the end of the barge. Um, you just see the hands maybe in or the top of the head and one arm is in the water in the back. Um, it's obvious that figure is dead. Yeah, but I can't see any any other movement. Uh, it's only this guy. Yeah, that's all you see, really. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna stay on land. I'm gonna have my have my bow ready. Okay. So Hagen and Agamar, you are going to swim out to the barge or the boat. Yes. All right. Um you swim out um you probably start up river just to let the current kind of pull you down you know it's going to be way too hard just to swim up you know maybe you walk 50 yards 50 meters above the boat or you know 100 yards 100 meters kind of gauging the current so that the current just kind of you just got to swim out and let the current kind of push you into the front of the barge as it's kind of riding you swim out there and you probably catch the rope of the anchor that's taut, um, and there's maybe another 10 meters or eight feet of that rope that's just near the surface of the water before you get to the top, till you get to the front of the barge that's riding on it, and the barge is kind of swaying back and forth and pull yourself up, you know, soaking wet. Um, you're kind of standing at the very front of the barge. You can see Gutorm even with it on the shoreline, and Adela and and Kai, and it just looks a wreck. Um, you kind of see these bloody smears everywhere on the deck of the barge as you're standing maybe two or three steps from the tip of the, the edge. You um, see maybe past the barge um, that figure laying flat on its back, um, flat on its stomach with part of its head in the water and its arm that Gutorm saw. The, the crates and barrels, a lot of them are broken open and strewn across, and there's blood, you know, across the crates and barrels and a spillage of uh, potatoes and uh, apples and corn meal and, you know, that type of stuff. Can we you, tell the origins of the, or, um, the make or origin of this barge? It's, it's, Ambrian, 
Um, barbarians don't really have barges of this nature. They do more commerce by river on kind of like long boats, long kayaks or double wide kayaks. You know, they have different varieties of smaller, larger kayaks, but they don't really have flat bottom barges. This is truly a Ambrian kind of commercial enterprise. There are some barges that troll up the Malgamor to take supplies to treasure hunters or expeditions or that sort of thing. Um, there's not a lot of commerce up the Malgamor River, so this barge is probably headed towards some sort of excavation of Ambrian nature further up the Malgamor. So no bodies, you said? No bodies? Just the one at the way back. Now, the barge is probably um, 20 meters long, 25 yards long. It's about 10 meters to, well, it's about 15 meters to 12 feet in width. It has a opening in the midsection or midships that both... Um, no one on the barge at this moment would know what that is. Gutorm would know because he's been on a barge like this, but uh, he's not on the barge with you. So there's an opening in the middle, like a hatch, that has like a square door that's open. Um, and that's what you see. Right, well, try to every... untether it and bring it to the, to the shore. Yeah, I'll try to bring it to shore. Yeah. You'd have to cut the rope. You look around the barge, you know, from that front area. Uh, maybe Gutum yells, look for poles! <laughs> because he knows they pull up themselves up against the current. And um, uh, you might see a couple poles, you know, scattered about on the, the port and starboard size. The anchor is taut, though, against the thing. Um, uh, you could try to tug up the anchor or you could cut it free of its anchor as it's batten down at on a bite on the front, very front, very uh, forward of the barge if you wanted, and try to pull it to the side. So before it, before we get the Angomar gets to the back, uh, he will uh, check the body first and see how the guy died. Yeah, he, you move to the aft, far aft, you go up one side, maybe around the opening in the midsection, past barrels and crates that have been completely destroyed and swashes of blood um, painted on the barge in little in wide areas and down the, the broken uh, crates and barrels. And you get to the figure and it just looks shredded, like the bottom half of it is missing. One leg has been pulled out. Um, it's just a bloody mess. The the upper section of leather armor is shredded, and really Gutorm just could see the the top half of it, but really the, the bottom half of it is, you know, bone entrails and a bloody pelvis. So Ag Agamar has seen a lot of battles. Can he tell if some if, if what killed the, the the man was human? Yes, obviously Ambrian. He would know that it was torn apart. This wasn't something that... Um, it wasn't done by blade or axe or, you know, that sort of thing. That's the kind of ravageness that you see. This is, you know, being torn asunder. It wasn't... He wasn't killed by a weapon. Okay, so... Um... Quickly search the body while well, Hagen's not looking. <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see what you find. I have no idea what we will find, but we're just roll it on the table. Um, uh, there we go. Darn it.
So you um, find like a finely wrapped, like I'm on the top section, like around like a, a harness around the top is, you know, a, a small water bottle that has um, sailor's knots and sailor's bite running around it, rope work really. And it's a like a silver watering clan or silver canteen. You kind of flick it with your hand and the top, you know, you take off the top and it's obviously like a canteen that's completely silver and kind of decorated with motifs of sailing cordage work around the rim and around the edges. And um, then in tucked in one of the small pockets, you find a small kind of irregular glistening black stone. It's probably the size of, you know, an eyeball, but it's, it's irregular in shape. So, um, he'll try to, Agamon will try to lift the anchor if he can. You go back to the back? Yes. You try to do that by yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. I would, I would say, why don't we do it? Oh, you could do together it together. Yeah, together. Do a heave ho. Okay. Um, so whoever wants to roll a strong test, they would just roll it at advantage and roll, well, I guess advantage since you're using, it's going to be really difficult. So it's already at a, a minus six. So you would roll a strong test at minus four. See if you like drag the anchor up off the bottom. So am I doing just normal, but minus four? Right. You know, I'm calculating the original. Without, and but not no assistance from from him then. Yeah, there is a there is assistance because it was at a minus six, and then I per, applied advantage, which is a plus two, so, so I just made it minus four. Minus like you minus both four. grabbed the rope and you're like tugging on it to try to get the okay. anchor to come free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You you guys are tugging so hard, tugging so hard, tugging so hard. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the anchor goes free and slack from the bottom. Both of you kind of fall back on your butts, you know, roll back on your hands a little bit, crash down onto the thing, and then the barge just starts going down river, kind of cantering a little bit back and forth, left and right. Gutorm is on the edge. You see the barge release. The current of the, the Malgamore is pretty strong, and the barge just starts going down river. Um, all by itself, you see, you see. Grab the poles, the poles. <laughs> Hagen and Hagen and Agamar fall back on their bottoms. Guterm yells at you, "The poles, fools!" And um, scramble for the poles. All right. So, what do you do? Like, um, you. How do you how do you plan to try to guide the barge to the side? And have any of you both, have either of you been on a boat? No, never. No <laughs> boats. <laughs> no boats. Okay. I think my other character did, but I don't think this one has. All right. Um, so Agamar tries to uh, tries to listen to what uh, Goodworm says. And uh, if he hears, he's going to try to, he's going to look for any poles. I think okay. we'd be yelling at him like, how do we do this? Guterm, how do they do it? Then on the edge, put the poles in the water, stop the boat. Okay, That's look for really poles. You have, you have to push. Poles. Kind of like a pole vaulter, I'll try to plant the pole. Okay. Um, where do you do that, Hagen? Gutorm's kind of probably running down the bank, trying to keep up with the boat that's now moving. It, yeah. It's starting to pick up speed in the current. Um, uh, where do you do that, Hagen and Agamar? You find these kind of long, thick poles, you know, that you could grasp with your hands. Um, kind of direct him to the front, but slightly to the side. So you go like to... port and starboard and try to jam the holes behind yep. the boat or along the side of the boat or? Along the side. Okay. Yeah, stay on the opposite side, the uh, opposite yeah. side, and try to, yeah. you know, push the boat towards the shore. Okay. Uh, 
So both of you make strong tests at minus six. Six? <laughs> You're stopping a boat <laughs> running down the river with poles you've never done before at the very back. There you go. Minus six. All right. Hagen, uh, make a quick test. What side are you standing on, port or starboard, Hagen? Port. Okay. You said qu quick? No, um, Hagen, Ag Agamar makes a quick test. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> He's going in the water. Nope, he holds on. Like, you jam the pole in the water, Agamar, and immediately, like, it rips it out of your arms. You just barely almost get pulled over the side of the boat, but you kind of, you know, whirlwind a little bit. Your arms and let arms going in, you know, round circles and try not to land. And um, Hagen, you said you were on port side? Yes. Yeah. So port side is towards the center and your pole grabs while, while Hagen... At while well, Agamar loses kind of control and the boat swings towards the center of the river as you pull it, as you kind of pull it around. And because Hagen isn't on the other side, um, you rotate the bo boat and it starts to swing towards the center of the river, you know, and it starts to move in that kind of angular direction as you're holding that pole down it starts to swing towards your port side in the center uh what does hagen do i want to try to use that momentum to push it in the same direction that it's moving now towards the center of the river towards, you're gonna well, you're gonna you're, that to the uh, like the other bank <laughs> the other side okay so you know you're gonna I mean? because because i can't i feel like i can't fight against the momentum right. of what just happened. So you're going to push with your pole. Yeah. Push yep. and pull it out of the water, which is what you're going to have to do. Like you're pulling the bowl, the, the, the boat that now swings towards the center, moves into the center of the Malgamar. You know, water starts pushing it over the side on your side, on the port side. You push it and leave it so that the boat kind of rights itself because it's swinging towards you and starting to list over or roll over on that side. And as soon as you push and bring your, it kind of rights itself. But now it's at like a 45 degree angle heading for the far side, the other side of the Malgamore. You're probably in the middle of the river. Uh, Gutorm, you're running along the side. You see this happen. Agamar almost falls in the water and you know, steps back before he can do so. The boat swings itself wildly into the center of the river and it starts to recede into the center of the Malgamore, which is probably about 100 yards, 91 meters in width at this section of the Malgamore. What does Gutorm do or yell? First of all, I think he, he, he chuckles a little. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, he, he just continues down the river, continues yelling, use the boat, <laughs> push. Yeah, the boat starts to get, you know, 100 meters ain't that far, 91 meters ain't that far, 100 yards. Like, it's pretty wide and deep still to swim it that far in that kind of current. Um, but you kind of watch this mayhem incur. Uh, Adela, uh, do you shout anything as the barge kind of almost tips itself over and capsizes and then Hagen gets it righted? Now it's headed to the far side of on the other side and at a, like a 45 degree angle getting caught by the current. Outside of just a, a quick yelp, you know, as almost being flung into water and crashing. No. Like, okay. do, you, do you guys know what you're doing? <laughs> Kai knew you were there with this enslaved spider and the and and Ignatius, the flaming being. You know Ignatius can't cross that water at all, and the spider isn't gonna cross that water either. Like sending either of them out there is impossible as you see this boat, you know, start to careen itself to the far bank far other side 
Uh, does Kai do anything? <laughs> and you're muted if you didn't. He eats his popcorn. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, yeah, whilst eating my popcorn, uh, I'm going to look to Spider and just be like, can you make rope or something? No, it's not a spinner. It has no spinnerets. This little, this little things aren't, you know, this this Those age, do. this juvenile age. You know, this is a small oh, brood. It's like juvenile, damn it! Right, the the brood mother was just testing the lowest of its brood. You know, maybe thinning out the pack of the weakest. That's what you all heard her say. Like you, um, okay, Hagen and Agamar, you start careening over to the. You're probably right in the middle of the river. You're about 50 yards, you know, 40-something meters from either side. The boat is pointed to the other side of the Malgamar. What do you two do? What do you discuss? Like, you know, you got these poles in your hand, and what are you going to attempt? Well, uh, try to push the pole, push the barge again. Maybe try to coordinate with Hagen. Okay. Yeah, well, I was people saying, on, people on the shore towards... could hear a lot of cursing from the boat. <laughs> what direction are you going to do? Are you just going to, you know, just try to uh -uh. angle it to the far side? Are you going to try to ride it back to go back towards the other way? Agamar will follow whatever Hagen okay. is going to do. <laughs> well, Hagen just... seems to know what he's doing. Kind of direct him towards the... Like I said, try to use the momentum that we had Okay. to continue in that direction. So you're just going to let it kind of pull it, keep it on that 45 degree angle, you know, as you're pulling, as it's kind of yep. obviously going to head towards the other side. Um, now that you got it pointed there, the river is going to try to push the back end because you're really going backwards. And the boat, you know, a barge like that generally can travel either direction. Um, but yes. the river is going to try to ride it, you know, a little bit um, and try to push it back to straight, you know, the likelihood. Let's see if what Mythic says, does the river ride it? Oh, so you feel it like you're standing there. It starts to push that back end, and it's going to make it straighten out maybe 20 yards, 18 meters from the far side. You want it to kind of run into the far side, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so, you, Hagen, you're giving directions to Agamar what to do, shouting across the bars because he's looking to you for for um for guidance, guidance. uh agamar roll a vigilant for me yeah agamar you're kind of looking over at hagen he's on the far you know the port side facing the other side the direction you're going and he's looking into that that area because he's got to be on that edge and put his pole down to try to keep pulling the boards so he's kind of standing with his back towards you shouting over and the far side of the Eonor or you're in the middle but the side you're going to is on his open side and you're kind of looking at him for advice and you see these two black arms and this human shape crawl up out of the hold in the center of the barge. So Agamar shouts and says, we got company. Now, Agamar, Hagen is yelling at you, you know, if you don't pull, that the barge isn't going to make the far side. You're going to be stuck on the river. Uh, what would Hagen do? as he sees this thing pull itself up out of the hold of the barge.
would I still be able to, as I'm still trying to guide it, look over my shoulder? And yeah, you look over your black, black bolt. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> you look I, would, I, would, I would continue to try to get it to shore. Okay, you look over your shoulder, Hagen, and that's what you see this dark humanoid thing pull out. Its arms are longer than it should be. It kind of stands up. One arm kind of drags still along the bottom. It's, you know, got swashes of blood across it. Hagen yells at you, Agamar, to pull. You see this thing move. Um, one to two is Hagen. Three to four is Agamar. It's Moving towards you, Agamar, relatively rapidly, you just see that it's black and bloody and disfigured. You're going to either have to pull to help Hagen get the barge to the other side, or you're going to have to give up the pole. What would Hagen do? You mean what Agamar? Agamar. Agamar. Yeah. Thought, what would Agamar do? My fault. <laughs> well, Agamar throws the pole, uh, pulls up the pole and throws it onto the deck and uh, unloops his axe. Okay. <laughs> Hagen, roll me a... He says, he says you're a, we should uh, take care of this first. <laughs> Hagen. What do you want me to roll? Well, it depends on what you would like to do. Um, you could perhaps guide the boat to the far side by yourself where you could, I'll, I'll try to guide it. And I don't care. Like, you know, if it's at an angle, like it doesn't have to be, you just want to hold it, you know, in that, at that, so it doesn't get pushed straight. Um, because you can look over your shoulder and see whatever this thing is move quickly towards Agamar. Uh, so instead of going perpendicular, I'm going to just go with it. that angle so keep that we on. eventually go to the that, that okay. bank of the river. So I would just have you roll a strong test at minus two. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Maybe there's some blood I slipped on on the deck. Right. Uh, uh, Roll a quick test at minus two, Hagen. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll probably go into the water. I'm yeah, I think you kind of look over your shoulder, see this thing rise out, decide you're going to jam the pole into the, into the ground to try to make sure the ship holds, and... It literally, the pole and everything just pulls you off the boat. And the next thing you know, you're in the water, in the Malgamar. You know, the pole hits you um, in the head. You fall into the Malgamar and just come up sputtering. And the last thing you really see is the boat go careening down with Agamar alone on the deck with this abomination. The... Group on the far side, Goblin, Gutorm, Adela, and Kai, you witness all this. You may have stopped running after the barge and just watching the mayhem, and you see this thing rise out of the back. You see Agamar unleash his axe and throw down his pole or throw it in the water and move towards it as, as the two of them are coming together. You see Hagen jam his pole in the water, and then it's, he's just ripped off the ripped off the barge and you just see him fall into the water they ripped off the barge and into a big splash and the you watch as agamar and this human abomination meet in the center of the barge and we will end it there for today all right, all right. thanks gene another lovely game i hope everyone had fun uh anyone have yeah, questions I'll, questions I'll for me Anyone have questions for me? Uh, no. Uh, although, does my spider 
gain experience for this session? Uh, probably not. You just created them. Um, Fair enough. I would think, you know, I would wait for next session. Everyone else gets five experience points. Um, I really did like the beginning. I didn't know what you guys were going to do and how that was going to work out and whether you were going to follow that trail, which was really improv, or follow the other barefooted tracks or what would happen when Agamark, you know, makes, you know, Ignatius comes up, what would he do with this fiery beast that comes out of the depths of Agamar? So uh, I did have a lot of fun in that section and, you know, the combat section in the middle, I wasn't certain how that would fly, which it was pretty darn dangerous. I think Kai's action <laughs> saved quite a few people and because <laughs> uh, that was a complicated foe and I was the the swarm was going to do certain things and then i ad-libbed you know the fiery servant creating that circle of safety uh which i think was fun um hopefully you all had fun i had a lot of fun but... yeah yeah you know what's funny about that part with the boots and <laughs> the tentacle monster i didn't even think as a player that it was a trap <laughs> <laughs> or you would have put something there. For some reason, I, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> that's like the that's like the most classic uh, dungeon master trick. That's right. <laughs> Here's a thing. There's a boot by this thing. Let's go check it out. <laughs> um, I thought it was giggly. That... Here is here is a point of interest. But oh. I do. You're being eaten. <laughs> I do think Gutorm going out there. That's what Gutorm would do. Like, like he's the goblin Gutorm. Like. He doesn't have as much experience. He probably has seen these things like this before, but you know, he's not, you know, that experience. Yeah. That experience is coming more and more. Like next time he sees a boot like that, he'll be like, Nope. Yeah. He's, he's driven by impulse right. uh, at times. <laughs> and when he sees something interesting like that, a, a boot is a very interesting thing for get on. There was a couple crux moments, uh, Adela rolling good to pull Gutorm out of the clutches. That was a really hard roll. Um, she had a roll less than a five or a four, and she rolled like a two. So that was a clutch roll because if you go down in the marsh in that thing, you know, like you might be rolling up two characters. So that was a really clutch roll of Adela going out and Gutorm helping and using all, and her rolling a two when she needed less than a four or five. Um, but I did have a lot of fun in improving that section figuring out and the boat was just a red herring to see what you would do but of course Hagen's gonna get undressed and swim out there I don't have to do much as the DM I just have to put that out there and say okay and Kutorm sees the body I'm like giving you all the clues and nope let's go swim out there and see what's there that was great fun here is danger let's all, jump all in the <laughs> right uh, Agamar hopefully you had fun and you like the same? Yeah, it was, it was it was very enjoyable. Thank you. Um, it's kind of how sessions go. Uh, I am somewhat improv. I have I leave wide variability to players make choices and let them choose. And I don't really plan that you have to leave. Um, and we just kind of see what happens. RP, see what happens. So. It was interesting when you had Agamar, hey, let's hunt these guys down first and play that character out. Like he's he's that kind of Ambrian nature and then having Hagen loop in. Um, so that was that's kind of, you know, how it goes. And it's a similar session.